Hey, it's the Bennington Show. Spring has sprung. The nor'easter is over. I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. I'm Ron Bennington. Uh, we are back. Back in uh, black. Um, back in a big, big way. Yeah. Chris got me a hotel room last night to ride the storm out because I was going to do Doug Loves Movies. And Chris had got me a smoking suite. Nice. I didn't even know these existed. Luxury. In New York. And the lady goes, and this will be a smoking room? And like I was like, yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> Most certainly it is. But as it, expected. Inside I was dancing. <laughs> I had a giant uh I had a giant bathtub and you could smoke cigars. So I'm in my giant bathtub smoking a cigar. <laughs> I'll say 18 minutes after I got there <laughs> with my complimentary robe. My phone uh, text goes off. I, oh, it's only something. I'm reading a book. I'm reading a book, smoking a cigar in the bathtub. And it just says, Doug Love Movies is canceled. <laughs> and I'm like, right back. Well, I'm already checked in. <laughs> <laughs> I Enjoy could, the room. You couldn't be more checked in in the yeah. scenario that you just described. <laughs> I could not be leaving in shame, all wet, walking through. At <laughs> the cigar so. The issue was the smoking room. Actually, I wasn't uh, expecting no, it to be so smoky. If it was a non-smoking room, I'd have battled the blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it, that's uh it's a rare thing to come across him. I, I've like gotten a few in recent time and it's always strange when it happens, particularly because we live in this like post smokers world. And that right now there is a New York City uh, councilman who his his action is trying to get this bill passed that there will be no smoking on the streets. Fuck so you, this dude. is Good luck. now I mean- there is no smoking in bars, restaurants and most most indoor facilities. He's saying you can't smoke inside or outside. He's saying there's no smoking in parks. And now adding to it, you can stand in a designated smoking area, but you should you will be fined if you walk and smoke at the same time because you're putting the secondhand smoke. And what if someone's there with their baby? And what if somebody smells you're it? right next to a truck? A truck is going to hurt you more than anything else. Yes. This is not ruining the fresh air of New York City. But here's what it is. This is a minority that people won't fight for. You know what I mean? Like, there's not enough of them. Like, everybody will be, like, pro-trans. There's more smokers than there is trans. (laughs) (laughs) And sometimes it's just like, um, yeah, but I don't like them. You know what I mean? Like, it's a matter of not liking them. Yes. We are the Muslims. Of the smoking world. I'm a third class citizen. I'm treated like garbage. And now they just want to put us in pens. This is fucking disgusting. You cannot smoke on the move anymore is what this guy's trying. It's not passed yet, but this is his passion. I'll take the fucking fines and not pay them. First of all, they don't even find you in the fucking park. What are they going to do? Call a cop? A cop is going to leave a a stabbing so we can drive over to Central Park and tell somebody to put out their smoke. All you got to do is put it out and say I wasn't smoking. That way just crazy. (laughs) They can't even get people to stop smoking crack. Uh, This is the big story of the day right now. And this just happened moments ago. Trump's lead lawyer in the Russia probe has resigned. And there are people saying that he's physically afraid of joe biden joe biden yesterday said if i think if i went to high school with him i would have taken trump out behind the gym yep and kicked his ass this is what he said now which is just ridiculous i guess his i guess his gym was located on the far end of the school yeah or in a separate building so this is what the president of the united states tweeted today um Crazy Joe Biden is trying to act like a tough guy. Actually, he is weak, both mentally and physically. And yet he threatens me for the second time with physical assault. He doesn't know me, but he would go down fast and hard, crying all the way. Don't threaten people, Joe. (laughs) We have got to do a thing where Trump's tweets are read by Dwight Schrute. Because that's the Dwight Schrute's yes. fucking thing. It really is. Everything about this story 
from Joe Biden's initial statement to this is just so hilarious. It's just so, so funny that we've got these two old dudes who are just like, I'll kick your ass. Just escalating by the moment. Very much like Vito and Luis J. Gomez. That's what it reminded me of. Um, And yet, Luis J. Gomez would beat the shit out of Vito. (laughs) That's been proven. That's not proven at all. Is there is there someone you would think would win in that fight if it actually were to come to a fisticuffs with Donald Trump and Joe Biden? No, there would be no winner. <laughs> uh, there would probably be two broken wrists <laughs> along with two dangerous bone spurs enough to keep you out of battle. I mean, if he can't fight when he's fucking 19. Right. How is he going to fight when he's 71? His spurs are better now. His spurs, they jingle, jangle, jingle. <laughs> You know what cures burn uh, bone spurs? What's that? Daily golf. Daily golf. Did I know that? Mm-hmm. That makes so much sense. Mm-hmm. Is Crazy Joe Biden a new nickname, or is he always called? No, he was Crazy Joe yeah. for a while. I think even his wife calls him Crazy Joe Biden, <laughs> which I really think he got from Crazy Joe Devola. But yeah, well, also some people say it's because he can put his whole fist in his mouth. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Of all of Trump's nicknames, though, if you're just crazy Joe Biden, like that's, that's not, a cool nickname. It's a cool out one. Of all of them, you know yeah. what I mean? Like that's one you would not be afraid of. And I think his worst nicknames are when he self stuffs like uh, low energy. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, like low, low energy is low not energy is a fun. fucking threat. Low IQ. Those things are yeah. too. They're not cool enough. Lion. Uh, Lion Ted. What did he call Hillary? Whore. Crooked. <laughs> Whore Hillary. He said that she had sex with sailors for money. Whore Hillary. It would be great if he would say something like, and then Hillary, she's a lesbian who has sex with women for money. What? Lesbian <laughs> prostitute? I think she's having sex with that assistant of hers. There are a lot of people that always tell me, you know, they believe that Hillary and her assistant have sex. Really? Yeah. I think- um... This is a uh, Wieners. The that, yeah, ex- the one who's yeah. married to the sex prevert. Ba, 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 ba. I want to hear this Jay Farrow micro uh, impressions. It's up on the eye bang right now. But as you know, I'm a fan of micro impressions. Yes, they are the best. And so Jay Farrow, Jay, Jay is Farrow yeah, he already, as you know, is just like a master of impressions. So these are mini. Like second long impressions, Chris. You might have to read the uh, setups for them because there's like a little card that sets up okay. what the person is doing. All right, these are nano impressions. Yes, with right, that's right. what I said. Come on, okay. I call them micro, but Obama is misheard by Alexa. Uh, Alexa. <laughs> Will Smith can't contain himself while watching Black Panther. Uh. Uh. Damn! Oh, man, yo. Kevin Hart can't get the bartender's attention. Excuse me. Ah, uh, down here. Tracy Morgan thinks a co-worker is pregnant. Did I do it? <laughs> Chris Rock can't figure out when to double dutch. want to jump in okay okay it's the best <laughs> that one is so weird when he did chris rock when he was on this show yeah i felt like double like starstruck for someone who wasn't actually in the room yeah it's amazing denzel washington tries to get out of a ticket officer one word two words training day dave Chappelle reprimands his puppy for peeing inside Oh, no, son. That costs $200,000. <laughs> I should have got a goldfish. I- <laughs> DMX hesitates before giving a controversial opinion. Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> Ice-T tries to understand a painting. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Jay-Z waits for the beat to drop. <laughs> Chris Tucker thought Shakespeare would be easier. Speak to me, 
bitch, I pray you, as I pronounced it. <laughs> That's unbelievable. It's so good. Bertie Mac gets the joke too late. <laughs> <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal can't close the zipper. <laughs> Idris Elba <laughs> argues over the pimple. That's so mean. <laughs> I insist, but um, you got me, right? It's good, man. Richard Pryor thinks he hears his parents <laughs> having sex. Sound like they fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye West talks to the guards at Buckingham Palace. I mean, why you ain't looking at me, though? <laughs> this is the best. Yeah. John Mulaney learns it's not for all intensive purposes. But that makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> the one white impression. Oh, yeah. I didn't even, I didn't even so realize. Hilarious. One white guy. <laughs> Ice Cube arrives at the premiere of Are We There Yet 4? Where's everybody at, though? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just, let's just stop for a second and say no one else does Ice Cube. <laughs> it's so no good, one. yeah. Uh, Cat Williams responds to a heckler. It don't even matter, bitch, because my hair's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Eddie Murphy checks himself out in a shop window. I'm so sexy. <laughs> Look at my ass. <laughs> wow. So good, so man. Ridiculous. He's the best. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw him do Denzel on SNL and I was like, that is so accurate. And I don't think I've ever seen someone do like now Denzel. People, now people start now, because yeah. they say, see, the thing is, once somebody unlocks the key, I know then everybody can. Then everybody can it's like, easy. oh yeah. It's easy to do an impression of an impression. It's like a diluted because you find that character. thing. Yeah. Because you find that thing that is the is the character. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm still working on my next one. <laughs> I'm not a hook. I'm not a hook. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a hook. <laughs> and I think impressions come back to being funny again. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like everyone does them, then they're tired. I feel like I'm the first one who's done uh, the first George Buzz. Uh, ain't it? <laughs> See, <laughs> so that's how Dana, Dana Carvey was yes. the same way. Yeah. That he would do this thing he would find this at gandit and everybody would like yeah he sounds just like him but he does it right he's and yet he captures the character of yes him. it's like a cartoon version of it be heard. <laughs> <laughs> um he did a uh he did a weird version of carson uh that it kind of people were like that's when carson said well, it looks like I should be, you know, tapping. Really? Uh, yeah, because the kids find me, you know. This is the they're young kids. Mocking me. Yeah, they're not digging it yeah. anymore, you know. Not getting it. <laughs> Didn't stop George Sr. <laughs> and then other people would start to do that to you at a party. Yes. Not it. Yeah, You're remember like, that was like a thing people would oh, do? Dana Carvey, not when he was it. his last couple years in fucking... SNL was massive. Yeah. Like everybody was doing them on the street. And people forget that Billy Crystal had that too with the You Look Marvelous. Mm -hmm. People forget Billy Crystal was on Saturday Night Live. He did one year, but it was like he was the host every week. That's how big he was on that show. But right now, I don't know if anybody does it better than Jay Farrell. No, I think he he is our master. And now that he's cracking into the white people thing with Mulaney, I think we're all on to something. <laughs> I know. They said that uh, Gilbert uh, used to also do uh, Seinfeld before Seinfeld was 
famous. So Seinfeld right. didn't have a TV. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And Gilbert would be like, what's the deal with shoes? You know, just <laughs> literally breaking that thing down to why are you doing anything that you do? Right. <laughs> like if you had Seinfeld Zach and said so it was going, what's the deal with shoes? He'd be like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. I thought, everyone, I thought it was trying to be relatable. Now, here's the thing. I can't. I love impressions and I can't stand an impressionist. Like, I could never go to a show that, where that a guy the, did an hour of impressions and yeah. nothing else. Well, you know, I kill myself. Why? Is because on SNL, there is a good vessel for viewing an impression when you're in a conversation and someone just busts it out. However, if you're just one man with a microphone, it always ends up being that setup where it's like, I wonder what uh, George Bush Sr. would say about this moment. You know, like, it's always, like, but here, uncomfortable. You no, know, it's always setup. terrible, and they turn around and all that shit. But there's nothing better than a guy who has a great stand-up act that can drop an impression of every time. And I'm talking about Mr. J. Moore's. That, you know, yeah. whatever's happening, if he's killing, then he'll tag with an impression if he's dying, he'll get out of it by doing an impression. Right. People are like, oh, <laughs> oh, Christopher Walken. I know it. But you don't want to do Frank Caliendo's act. You know what I mean? Like, that's hard to just sit there and for an hour, hour and 15, do impressions. Um, Jay, Jay, what's up? Oh, what's up, Ronnie? Hey. Um. So you guys played the video of uh, doing nano impressions. There's a guy that did the exact same thing for Vanity Fair. Uh, his name is Ross Marquan, and he does, you know, Christopher Walken. Uh, yeah. Wow, wait a minute. He does know, a Christopher Walken music. impression? <laughs> That's amazing. This was this was for Vanity Fair. This was for Vanity Fair as well, and Nano Impressions is their thing. So they have impressionists come on and do their specific impressions very short. Oh, yeah. And his were so specific and so good. Like, you would feel like you were in the room with, you know, the people that he was impersonating. That's weird that you would say that. That's almost a little too intimate. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but I, I look, I'm going to I'm going to disagree uh, that Vanity Fair came up with this. As being the first persons who did it, because if you remember a person did this on Unmasked, and it was unbelievable. Mr. Kevin Pollack. So Kevin Pollack was the first person I saw do it. And Kevin is another one of those guys. He's a great actor. He's a great comic. And then he could do an amazing impressions. But he never would come out just as an right. impressionist. <laughs> He's doing an act, drops the impression, kills, act, impression that kills. And it's, it's, it's very fucking smart. Um, I loved his uh, his. I remember his Albert Brooks in that Unmasked was so killer. Um, yeah, his Albert Brooks was amazing. Uh, Steve in Texas. Hey, what's going on, guys? Yeah. So the the thing I don't like about impressionists is is that they have kind of a a set group or, or lines that they use where they can't riff or or go like Jay Moore and and Anthony Cumia especially. Can can do voices one that not a lot of people do, and then they can riff as it and be funny in that voice, and that's what that's what makes it funny for me. I, I think Anthony Cumia has done Dice every day for at least the last eighteen years, <laughs> and I laugh like a baby every time that he does it. Every single time, it fucking cracks me up. It does take a lot because it sometimes it is easy to unlock like, oh, that person just said this like this right. and you can parrot it back. But it takes a lot to figure out how to continue to have a conversation as that person. Oh, uh, Ron in PA. How you doing? Good, Ron. No, you was talking about the impressionist. Did mm -hmm. you ever see that one that from Big Bang Theory that plays that Howard Wallowitz. Did you ever see his Al Pacino impression and the other ones he did? Wait, on the show he the does an time. Al Pacino? <laughs> yes, he did. On oh, Big Bang man, I like that. <laughs> I hope he does later career Al Pacino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody. Oh, big ass. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that guy does do a good impression still. I don't know Howard's name in real life. Simon Hedberg. But here's the thing about Helberg. Simon Hedberg. 
Uh, he gets so much money from Big Bang, he doesn't need to be running around the country chirping like a fucking parrot so people get happy. <laughs> uh, Chris, we got some people stopping in here today, right? Yes, we do. We have uh, Mr. Doug Benson stopping by. Can you do a Doug Benson impression? Yeah, I do. Hey, I'm Doug Benson. <sighs> this is getting Doug with high. Seems like all of his impressions sound the same. Yeah, like no one. Like he just doesn't. Na- he thinks everyone's nasal, but him. <laughs> I'm not nasal at all. Vito, my new nickname for you is going to be Vittles. And I just thought of it right now. Oh, that's good. But I need some hydrogen mixed with oxygen. Got it. I think. Give me two hydrogens for every oxygen. That's okay. a good idea. But I never fucking th- swirl them. I never think to double down on the hydrogen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want H one O. Ugh. It's fucking dirt water. <laughs> I saw Chris put his cigarette out in his water and then down the water right Oh, my after. God, Chris. And I brought it up to him, and he goes, what, I'm smoking anyway. And, I, and then he had me this, at that point. This is why you shouldn't be smoking while walking on the streets. You should I, be banned. This is what Trump's lawyer said. Uh, John Dowd uh, dropped out today and said, I'm not going down with this motherfucker. Wow. <laughs> I think it's the worst thing I wonder what he means by say. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really unclear at this time what he's trying to say. <laughs> um, Pete was on uh, on uh, what fucking show was it? Bill, Bill Maher show. Pete Dominic. Yes, Pete Dominic, of course. And he said something like this: "We're going to impeach that motherfucker <laughs> about the president of the United States." He's going to do it. He's going to be part of the impeachment team. No, he's going to stand on the sidelines. Yeah, and, you know, talking. We to the, the mic. people. Oh, I think right. is what he meant. <laughs> Uh, Tom, Tom, you're on Bennington. Yes, hello, Bennington. Hello. Dan Soder's Macho Man is the greatest impression in the history of impression. Now, here's the amazing thing about Dan Soder. So, the first time I see him, he's opening up for uh, Boss and Bonnie, and they did that kind of um, newlywed game show, right? So, they bring up Dan Soder. And I'm watching him, and he doesn't do the fucking Macho Man impression. He doesn't do the impressions on stage. Weird. No. It's the, it's, it's the greatest impression ever, and he, he talks about nothing like the love between a boy and a man. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll let him do it, though, Tom. You know, let's keep, it, <laughs> let's keep it funny. But, yeah, he doesn't lean on his impressions. Won't do his impressions. <laughs> I guess he figures there's a lot of people in his audience who don't. Know who Macho Man is. Yeah. But when you dink and, dink and he does the fingers. I love the fingers. Yeah. It's very important to the impression. It's the strange little fingers. I guess I guess the Pacino is what most people do now, right? That's the number one. I think the walk in moved into that number oh, one. Oh, I thought I thought Pacino replaced Walk in. You think so? Yeah, I thought I think it went like this. Jack Nicholson. Uh, into Christopher Walken in the yeah. early 90s into Al Pacino. Into later days Al Pacino. Later days Al Pacino. Nobody does uh, Panic in Needle Park Al Pacino. <laughs> <You're> very, <laughs> so much more subtle. Uh, Rich! Rich! You're on Bennington! Aloha! Aloha! Aloha. I was wondering if you guys were looking forward to uh, Isle of Dogs by Wes Anderson's opening this weekend. I'm not. I know you don't like the animated. I don't. Yeah, I'm probably not even going to go to it. I um, I will go see it for sure. Um, This weekend? uh, We'll see. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. um, If you. Basically, I appreciate the fantastic Mr. Fox for many reasons, because it's not like a kid's movie by any stretch. And the, the dialogue is so sharp and the. The little things they do with the intonation and, and the way they make the characters. What the you know, look <laughs> R- Amazing. Rich, I want you to go and enjoy the hell out of it. I want you to, <laughs> seriously, I want you to just, I, I'm just not that animation. I fell asleep watching it. Yeah. And I only saw it the one time. I never saw it on TV. It looked like somebody had taken dolls was taking a picture of them one at a time. That's what they did. And then trying to voice with it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I find it very off-putting that style of animation. Really, you don't like the stop motion? No, I think it's it's it throws. What me about off. when the South Park guys did the marionettes? That's really creepy. <laughs> There's nothing creepier than that <laughs> thing yes. with the strings. And I remember even being a little scared by it when I was a kid. Very weird. Very. Their faces are just fucking creepy. Thanks so much. How about this kid just lighting the world on I fire? I know she is the best. I just found out she's only a sophomore. I know. There was a job opening uh, here, and I'm like, she would be perfect for it. And <laughs> Vito says to me, she's just a sophomore. She's just a baby. And she said, I'm just a girl whose intentions are good. Oh, oh Lord, Lord, please don't, don't let me. Ryan! I think it's a good song today. Yeah. Ryan. <laughs> Hey. Yeah. Oh, your phone stinks, bud. Uh, uh, your phone stinks. I can't hear Just you. say as fast as you can what you wanted to say. I was going to say, Kevin Polak doing Christopher Polak. Walken doing the aristocrat. The best impression I've ever heard. I think. First of all, I don't know if anybody's as good as Kevin Pollack. If anything, there's some people I say, oh, he might be a dead heat. With Kevin Pollack. Yeah. But when you're really talking about it, those things. And when Pollack used to go on the Johnny Carson show, you could see the love that Carson had for him. Mm -hmm. And he would fuck with, he knew where <laughs> Carson's thing was. I used to hit him. It used to make me so happy. And Pollack's fucking amazing. I love Kevin Pollack. Um, Mike. Yeah, man, I was just going to say the best impression I ever saw, I heard a guy do Tony Danza once on the radio that was spot on. Well, that guy doing Tony Danza again was our good friend Anthony Cumia, and he's the one who came up with thoughts and prayers. <laughs> and I think one time, the, uh, Tony had a, a show on in New York that was replaced by Rachel Ray, and I think they sent an intern down to the line to get into the, the show uh -huh. with a telephone. And Anthony just telling him stuff as Tony Danza. <laughs> but that thoughts and prayers. See, that thing that you could just say thoughts and prayers and kill with it. That's, that's what makes me je jealous of somebody who could really do a, a good impression. Um, Chuck. Chuck. Best impersonation ever, hands down, was, is when Jim Norton does his Chip Chipperson. I think that one stinks. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I don't like the way Jim does Chip. Now, on the other Doesn't hand... Doesn't sound like the real Chip. When Chip does Norton, unbelievable. <laughs> and he did it for me once on the phone. When Chip <laughs> wanted me to come down and do his show, I'm just like, I don't know. Let me check the timing. And then he did his Norton. And I'm like, is Norton there with you, Chip? Well, it was just Chip. <laughs> <laughs> I think something's happening but between Chip Chipperson and Babe, his producer. You think? Babe, I'm leaving. Must be on my way. Chris, you never give me plugs. Everyone's going to come in here all day. You've plugged the fuck out of them. You'll be plugging that movie at 2 o'clock. Nothing for me. For you, you're going to be performing at Fairfield Comedy Club in Connecticut Saturday, March 31st. There's two shows, one at 7 p.m., one at 9 p.m. Go to fairfieldcomedyclub.com for tickets. Here's what I plan on being my opening joke. You ready? Yeah. Hey, guys, let's keep this a fair field, okay? <laughs> We're going to have fun out here tonight, but let's keep it a fair field. <laughs> That's where we are. All right. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> I just has the one seconds. joke. <laughs> I thought I'd do a micro impression of myself. <laughs> but I'll tell you, all these micro impressions, I prefer a macro mm -hmm. impression. That's why I would like for Jay to be cutting full specials as each of those comedians. And then I'll be impressed. Jay Okerson? No, Jay Farrow. Oh. Huh. Remember macro and micro yeah. impressions? Do you think that SNL totally <laughs> fucked up by not making Jay Farrow a gigantic star? Yep, I do. I do think that that was a, a mistake. Because every really one sure. of those guys, we could have just watched a sketch about. Even if it was hosting a game show or a talk show. <laughs>
I feel like the only time they ever let him go off with a bunch of impressions was the one time on Update when he did, like, if a bunch of black, famous black comedians uh, went Don't to be party. racist, dude. No, that was the joke. You're a fucking Pito. racist. The, was I was the, talking to Ian about that the other day. No, don't, yeah. don't, don't By the way, Ian, against me. Uh, Ian is not a black person's name, and I know two black guys named Ian now. <laughs> That's weird. I know a black guy named Ian. Well, you know the same two that I know, and then do you have one more? Yes, I have another okay. one. Okay. So I'm uh, Ian. Never used to be a black guy's name. No, the only Ian I know is a Jewish man. Well, you know two of the three Ians that I know. Oh uh, yes, the two other Jewish men. <laughs> I would have thought that Ian is an English name, like the Brits, like Ian Anderson, and oh. all that kind of shit. You would always hear those people being Ians. Yeah, his, his last name is pretty British, like English sounding too. What is well, it? Lane. Yeah, but that's British. Ian Lane average. sounds like he should be in the Small Faces. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good name. And Ian Lane, he is so tall and is so black. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> but all African Americans have English sounding names. Thanks for bringing it up, Vito. Racist slavery plantation humor. <laughs> I guess you think humor. I think I guess you think slavery is funny. No, I don't think slavery is funny at he all. Loves it. Why are you laughing? I mean, that, like there was a funny joke a second ago. That's why I'm laughing. Jimmy, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on? You guys are talking about impressions uh, yeah. and funny. You're talking about Ian. My my, I saw this guy. I'm from the Bay Area, so I'm a little bit biased. But there's a guy from the Bay Area named Ian Harris that I used to see back at the Punchline back in like the 90s. Uh -huh. and this guy was doing crazy good impressions that were like completely different stuff I've ever seen. Like, he was seen doing, like, James Spader, and he was doing John Malkovich back in the day. He was doing uh, all kinds of stuff that I, that I just haven't seen people do, and the guy was really good. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, you know, like I said, I haven't seen the guy in years, but, um, you know, he's, he, he was funny. He was good. He was really good. I don't know. Ian Harris, he's though. the guy. All right, thanks. I can do in uh, a couple impressions. I'm going to do one for you. This is Mr. Loopy. You see a road in this yard? You see a sidewalk in this yard? Then you stay out of this yard! <laughs> That's Mr. Loopy. Um, I'm going to do Jonesy for you. Jonesy at the Jones? candy store. Okay. Now you see I'm on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> While these are funny, I'm just worried people aren't going to get the references because it sounds like these are people from your childhood. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I'm sure they're accurate. Well, let me tell you something you used to kill in my neighborhood. <laughs> Everybody would go, do Mr. Loopy when we're walking through his yard. <laughs> there was a German guy in my neighborhood. We only used to call him Mr. Bush because he always claimed that people were fucking with his bush when they walked by. <laughs> now, he, because he would get so crazy, after that, when you would walk down the street, you would pull a piece of his bush off just to have him come streaming out of the house. It's almost like he had to be just sitting at a window to see a little kid pull on a bush. Yeah. It was just one bush? Well, it was the bush that was closest to the sidewalk, Chris. I'm sure if you would have got to his tree, <laughs> he wouldn't have liked it. But it was set fairly far back. <laughs> There was always some houses that it was better to cut through, and it would drive fucking people crazy if you cut through their lawn. Why? Because they would get that um, like man-made path. path. Yeah, but what about? Who cares? Exactly. You know what? It's not like I'm not going to go over to my friend's house and go like this. What's with the path going through your yard? Somebody was talking to me about um, you know that exact thing when. There's uh, an easier A to B, and so people cut a path, and then you get that dirt path. It was like around my college campus, there was a lot of those yeah, where people right. would just be like, oh, this is the fastest way. And somebody had said to me, there's an entire subreddit that is dedicated to like those man-made footpaths. And people would just share pictures of them and discuss them because they were fascinated by them for some reason there's a subreddit of everything <laughs> like that's something that you would never think would be a subreddit of just man-made footpaths <laughs> there was um on my way home from school there was this guy that i used to yell this back at hey hey you you get out of my yard because he would yell <laughs> hey you get out of my yard <laughs> and then i would do that back at him all right uh 
Biden has doubled down again and said he would love to fight Trump. Fuck yes, this is getting oh, crazier by the minute. I don't dig in crazy, Joe. D- dude, can I just tell you something? I got enough crazy. Oh my god! I got enough fucking crazy. I don't want to do anything about Chris. Is this. that it? This, yeah, this is our desire path. This is the subreddit for devoted to paths. Desire path. Do not create a path. <laughs> Clear path. Well, nobody means to create a path. <laughs> and you can see the road ends and you, and yeah. you walk out. A kid is not going to walk all the way around. No. That's for a fucking car. A kid is going to cut through. You don't like it. Don't live on a fucking corner lot. Desire path is is like actually like kind of a pretty name for it. Too pretty. I've created a desire path. We the people. I know we're not allowed to bring this up anymore, but I find it a little gay. Oh my god! I, <laughs> by the way, the worst thing you could I think there's only one class of people who says that is gay. Now, left, like uh, white people are off it, but black people will say something is gay. Yeah, they do the say it. I thought you were going to actually say gays because <laughs> I know quite a few gays. Well, gays like- will say, you know, the other f. Gays always act like they're not the gays that are sensitive. Right. They always. That is very true. And we're like, well, somebody's fucking sensitive. Somebody's got to. Uh, Greg. Greg. Hey. In hey, Iowa. Ron. Hey. What you doing, Ron? Greg. I'm yeah. old Greg. <laughs> it was uh, talking about people being named Ian, and I started thinking about it. All the there's a bunch. Of, I guess it is more of a British name than anywhere else. But like, said Ian Anderson and Ian Gillian from Deep Purple and Ian Hunter from Mata Hoople. There was yeah. always Ians in those bands. Ian uh, Lemmy, Lemmy, is a British Lemmy's fucking Motorhead. name. Lemmy's, Lemmy's name is Ian. I did not know Lemmy's name was Ian. And then there's an Ian Moore from Texas. I don't know if you heard of him, but he's kind of popular back in the nineties. Can I tell you something? I know him very, very well, and I'm very impressed with his work. Uh, when I left Wait. yesterday, Ed Trunk was going to have a sat down talk with Judas Priest. Oh, nice. And I'm like, oh, what yeah. is he going to do five, ten minutes into this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I got, but the, um, and like, so it's the snow. And the snow was so bad yesterday that Justin Timberlake canceled his Madison Square Garden show. Um, but mm, everyone showed up to see Judas Priest. And, Everyone was in a black T-shirt. Nice. That's the uniform. I felt like I walked through the underbelly of the eighties when I left here yesterday. <laughs> really don't mind if you sit this one out. Hi, I'm Ian Anderson, ladies and gentlemen. Stop calling me Jethro Tull. Your words, but a whisper. Your deafness, a show. Chris, was that a thing that you kept mixing up Ian Hunter and Ian Anderson? Yes, at that, one was, time? that was really bad. I was like, I was saying prep or whatever, like notes or putting things in schedule, and keep calling me an Anderson. And this is the thing when you do that for the person hosting, you can't put a bad phrase in their head because it'll come up again. I know. There's a moron on our staff who kept telling us Zoe Douche was coming in. Yeah. Zoe Douche. Now imagine if I would say to her, Zoe Douche is here. She's like, what are you doing? Fucking start your shit with me? Yeah, and the thing was, it was the first time was bad, but we corrected him and said that is not the way her name is pronounced, and we continued to hear douche. And then one time, Jen sent it to me, and then she said, Zoe douche, and I go, it's Deutsch. And she goes, oh, Vito keeps saying douche. <laughs> Look at how he gets so mad at girls. Oh, God, he, he gets fired. He's just as mad at men as girls you saw with Louis J. Gomez. Relax, yeah. girls honey. You're supposed to be the fun Take guy. Take a seat. Yeah. You're supposed to be the fun guy, and you have destroyed yourself with the audience through your anger. I don't like being accused of things like that. Well, get used to it. I'm going to accuse you. Once yeah, you're going to be accused of the truth, it's dude. It's going to happen. That fucking did go down. Uh, the, well, I did say, I did say douche. douche. Yeah, so why get <laughs> mad? Yeah, so what? what's so upsetting about the fact that you Why come across as you a woman beater? Douche. I'm not a woman beater. I just feel like... I don't think I impl- I don't think I implanted that in Jen's head. I think Jen came up with her own way of reading the No. Name. 
You no. said it so much, she repeated. Yes, because that was our point. That was to my you. fear is it was going to happen to me when she came in. Tuffy, this is why we're fucking talking to you, okay, strong man? I don't, I'm not. Strong man. Listen to me so you can learn. Strong man. When you keep saying it over and over, people repeat it. I I, I tried to fix it. I fucked uh, what up. What are though. you? You're a pro Deucer. doucher. <laughs> pro doucher. <laughs> Just accept your failure. I accepted the Ian Hunter, Ian Anderson thing. That I fucked that up. Right, but you love to it. accept your he, failure. That's right. the difference. He's <laughs> like, no, you really don't have to do much to for Chris to be like, please allow me to whip myself Look, and say sorry. <laughs> I when like, I told Chris yesterday, serious. and I literally said it this way. Uh I'm in heaven right now. You booked me into a smoking room. He screamed at me. I specifically said non-smoking room. All right, so this and started going crazy. And I'm like, why would you take... I'm giving you... I just gave you producer of the year fucking <laughs> stuff. I thought you were fucking with me. I thought the room was horrible. Can I, I wasn't sure what was going on. I didn't I, think there were any smoking rooms left in the relax, York City. Look, man. This is what I'm going to say. Take it down This is the notch. slick way to do it. When he says, I got a smoking room and I'm loving it. Then you come back to him and say, nothing but the best for you, Mr. B. I made very, I made it very clear to them. You would like smoking room. Take credit for your mistakes. Enjoy. But I know you didn't say non-smoking room. Who would? It's fucking 2018. You wouldn't point out, and is this a non-smoking rental car? No, you never say it. Um, are we going to break in a moment, Chris? We have a couple guests coming in. Uh, uh, yes, yes, we are. What are you trying to do? I'm going to give you a live read. Are what we... did I say about taking you out of that fucking role? Look at this. He just hands them out so <laughs> delicately. It's just so annoying. Is there another? Is there two reads to there, do? There will be two reads. Then yes. give me both so I don't have to go through this <laughs> again. Pipers are Pipers? <laughs> Pipers. <laughs> Can I tell you? <laughs> is this your least favorite part of the passing paper? He passes to you and then does this move? I'm getting good at it. No. No. The amount of times I've seen it go right, right in the drink. Well, then, uh, he tries to be a logo of a fucking film company. <laughs> <laughs> so Doug Benson is here? Doug Benson is here. And after that? Jim Jeffries. So it's been a very nice day. And then at 2 o'clock? Am Divine, Blake Ganderson, and Andrew's Home, a Game Over Man premieres tomorrow on Netflix. All right, so look, you see, we got you five big comedy stars today, folks. And yes, we will bring up Patrice to Andrew's Home. <laughs> How he handles it is up to him. Next time you go to the grocery store, pay attention to how long it takes. Actually, don't waste your time. I'll tell you, too long. It's 2018, the days of going to the grocery store, battling for a parking space and searching high and low for some obscure ingredient are over. It's time to say hello to HelloFresh, the meal kit delivery service that makes cooking healthy, delicious meals fun, easy, and convenient. Just go to HelloFresh.com, pick out the recipes you want, and they're delivered directly to your doorstep. They come every week in a special insulated box along along with easy-to-follow step-by-step instructions and full-color pictures. Each Hello Fresh box includes fresh seasonal ingredients that are perfectly portioned. No wondering if you have the right amount and, wa- and no waste. Just delicious meals that you can make in 30 minutes or less. And for limited time, you can get $30 off your first box when you go to HelloFresh.com slash raw plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash raw for $30 off. HelloFresh.com slash raw. Hashtag Bennington. Come what your beak. Doug hates candy wrappers, screaming baby sticky seeds with 50 ads and popcorn kernels in his teeth. There's still not one that he won't see, cause Doug loves movies. Please. Doug Benson is here Yay! with us. Yay! Yay, Doug Benson! Yay! Hey and yay. You know that there uh, people were crying in the streets last night because <laughs> Doug canceled Doug Loves Movies. Yeah, that the they first... didn't have to salt some of the streets because the tears were getting yeah. chopped. <laughs> but was that the first cancelization in the history of Doug Loves Movies? Um, 
Great question. Thank you. I love the hard balls. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming at your rub. Coming at me hard, Ron. <laughs> Don't you know how high I am? This isn't um, a fluff piece like you normally get. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, I've had a couple of times I had to cancel because of uh, flights, and this is the second time where I was teasing the audience because I thought I had such an amazing lineup. I was like, you got, you can't miss this one. And the last time that I did that, I had on the same episode. It was going to be. Uh, Edgar Wright, John Hamm, and wow. Kumail Nanjiani. Wow. All three of them together. And uh, my stupid flight was late, and I, I completely missed it. And then um, got stuck in Houston overnight, I think, even. So it was really depressing just sitting in a airport hotel room when I could have been sitting next to John Hamm. <laughs> and, um, and, then, uh, and then last night, of course, uh, that horrible, horrible storm. Mm. Storm of the century. That, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they didn't oversell it at all. <laughs> uh, you know, because the venue was like, hey, Doug, we don't want to do the show because it's a state emergency, and the governor just said, nobody leave your homes. And it's like, I was like, okay, let's not do it then. You know, that's, you know, it's not my decision. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, every Broadway show happened last night. Yes. Everyone got in and out just fine. Yes. <laughs> thousands and thousands of people. I, I, I was just going to have 300 people come by for some movie trivia. I can speak for Manhattan and say that the 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 roads stayed wet, not snowed. Yeah, you know in I mean? Brooklyn they were, they were snowy. Like Brooklyn, they were But that's another borough completely. <laughs> you know. They were just worried that you know after a whole day of it or eight, however many hours it was, maybe like Yeah, it was it was all day, hours, 14 yeah. hours or Chris, something. she's great. Carly's the best. <laughs> but here's the thing about Carly. Too young to work here, I found out. I, I had something I thought would be perfect for you. Someone, then they told me you're only a sophomore. Yeah, I'm 19. What the hell? She's 19. Yeah. Well, you're great for 19. <laughs> I just hope you're not peaking now. <laughs> Could you believe she's 19? No, I was very surprised. I was very surprised. I don't know the people. I thought when people intern, they're seniors. Yeah, I think that we've mostly had seniors intern for well, us. Well, why would someone intern if they're not a senior? I mean, what are they looking to the future? Maybe Spencer Berger was, un- obviously, yeah, you know, he was, he was a youngster. Yeah. He's a special case, as yeah. you know. <laughs> That's true. Very special case. So the last night's show so Last night, I was teasing that yeah. I was saying this, this is going to be a great show, and then I'd write seriously, and I'd spell it like Sirius XM, <laughs> thinking yeah. I'm super clever. It was going to be... Ron Bennington from Bennington. Jim and Sam from the Jim and Sam Show. Wow. Big J and Dan Soder from The Bonfire. And Tom Takar from You Up with Nikki Glazer. The men of Sirius XM. Yes. Nikki and Gail were invited. They both had better plans, like <laughs> staying home during a storm. <laughs> I had a sick sense about it. It's you did, probably what You had it a was. feeling. This thing's going to get canceled anyway. I just want my dad to spend a night in the tub with a cigar. I did. I, I, you know, because I got something fairly close to your thing so I could walk yeah. and then be close to work. I mean, I had Sweet my deal. shit together. Yeah. I'm going to bill you now. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, no. Get the Me? Yeah. We always uh, bill serious. Yes, it's the best thing. <laughs> That's like, you know, because I'm going down to Austin, I could, uh, I was screaming uh, on the phone at an airline, I'm not fucking moving to any class but first class. <laughs> but I only do that when I fly with Sirius. I would right. never buy a first class ticket for myself. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, they're pricey. Yeah, they yeah. Are they're pricey. like, it's, a, it's quite a markup. Oh, when... But when, when you you're got, not paying, I don't give a fuck. And when you have a per diem, nothing but the best for you. <laughs> yes. well, we were, I, I think we were maybe going to D.C. or Austin, and yeah. we were all getting food. Yeah. And uh, Vito was like, I really want the lobster roll, but it's so expensive. I was like, dude, <laughs> it's fine. And he was just like, it still feels indulgent. And I was like, I cannot relate to what no, you said. I saying. can't. I, I'll spend every cent, every cent the, of the per diem. <laughs> That was going to be a great show. Yeah. I brought, uh, you know, since I prepared a bunch of games for that show yeah. and may not be able to get that lineup back together ever again, I brought them here today if you'd like to play. Well, we will play. I think we got uh, s- stopping in in a second. Yeah, just a few minutes. So oh, uh, Jim Jeffries. I'll get out Jim of the Jeffries. way. No, you can no, sit you with stay. the you know, Jim. <laughs> 
Everyone loves. I but do know him. I, I don't want to start a game and then Jim Jeffries. No, walks I get it. In and I get it. We all feel disappointed. No, let's cancel me twice. <laughs> no, in the no. Same week. <laughs> now here's another thing that I had planned to do. You know how you bring in a prize? I picked out a great prize oh, for no. your audience, but then I picked out another prize that I was going to give to Big J. Really? Yes. Which has to do with the Philadelphia Eagles. And I know that it would have been a nice thing. I was going to give it to him in public, like guys get engaged in public. Right. Oh, that would really have been beautiful. Sweet. I know. And then this fucking so called snow, which, let's face it, the theater bucked. I hope they don't find that. Uh, they were worried about getting home after because the talk kept being that it's just going to get heavier and heavier as the yeah. night goes on. And then it didn't. All right. What are uh, you going to do? Better safe than sorry. Yeah. I don't know. I'm better fucking sorry than safe. <laughs> I like. I wanted it to go well. Everyone we got, got a hurt. better story today. So yeah, some stuff went down. Second season of the Jim Jeffrey Show premieres next Tuesday, March twenty seventh, ten thirty on Comedy Central. Jim has a special coming out on Netflix in June. JimJeffries dot com for all of his dates. Let's bring in Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries is in studio. The second season of the Jim Jeffries Show premieres next Tuesday, March 27th, 1030 p.m. on Comedy Central. Jim has a new special coming out on Netflix in June and JimJeffries.com for all his dates. Jim, this is your 50th special. You've done 50 now? Uh, it's number f- <laughs> no, four, 482. 482. Yeah. It, it is a few boot, bootleg yeah. ones, but I don't get paid for those ones. But you have put out quite a few specials. Uh, I think it's seven or eight. Yeah. I, I'm not sure because there, there was a couple in Britain that never really got over here, but it's, it's definitely six ones in America so yeah and is that material you can never go back to again never no, I, I, to you. I yeah. never do it again so I'm, yeah. already, I'm already in the panic stages now because the special is going to come out in June sometime I don't know the actual date or around there and so I've got all these dates up until June where I'm just going to keep doing that material and then the, I have dates in July that I'm <laughs> shitting myself about <laughs> yeah for me personally if yeah. I'm going to be honest with you if you're planning on seeing me in July I wouldn't get tickets to that no not going to do it yeah. gonna... well people want to come down and tell you where they're from and what they do for a living <laughs> <laughs> yeah I want to uh, alright have just chat with you about yeah. the news I have about 20 minutes of material that I've never put on yeah. a special that I just sort of bring back all the time yeah. Where I'm just like, ah, that George Bush is an idiot. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Let's do a bit of that one too. <laughs> now, uh, I just saw this. Uh, Trump's lawyer dropped out uh, just a few minutes ago. So the lawyer that was working for him. Uh, on, the, the on the Russian. Stormy Daniels? Or no, no the this Russian? is a Russian probe. He, does he have a Stormy Daniels lawyer and a Russian probe yes, he, lawyer? Yeah, like, he has like, different. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like that would be good to be yeah. put in different departments. <laughs> Both of those are full time yeah. jobs. Yeah. Well, jobs are up in general because of how many lawyers he hires. <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm, I'm the pissing on hookers lawyer. It's, yeah. a, it's a fun one. It's a fun one. Yeah. Um, no, did he piss on the hookers or did the hookers pee on him? That's what. Well, we don't know. It yeah. has, hasn't gone to, to we haven't gone to yeah. trial. Well, we, pissed, we're just though. we're just speculating. Someone in Russia did something with urine. Now, when you, I'm did, sure of that. When you did this show, did you think it was going to be almost full time Trump? We we don't want it to be full time Trump. Yeah. We actually actively try to make it not Trump because the, the biggest criticism we get is from people going, "Oh, just more Trump bashing," and it's like, believe I'm not trying to. I'm not trying yeah. to. But if he calls Kim Jong Un little rocket man, I have to mention it that day, right? Or if his son has an affair with Gordry O'Day, we got to mention. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, you know. But I'd rather be talking about school shooting and fucking healthcare. Right. You know? Yeah, he's still connected to those topics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he, he still has to come up. His name is everywhere. <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, As let, he wants it. Let yeah. me stipulate something. When I said I'd rather be talking about school shootings, <laughs> not, like, not like we had it. Let's go to the tote board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'd, I'd rather be talking about how to fix that or if the... I, I'd, I'd, ideally, I'd like to be talking about how we fixed it. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. We had a school shooting the other day, but they didn't think the numbers were big enough. You know what I mean? It was like one girl got killed. That's not going to make the news. No, that's that's, really, that's yeah. not a news story. In Australia, that would be a story for years, and there'd be a march every every year on that date. You know, <laughs> yeah. it, it would be like a big thing. Yeah, yeah, and it was a disgruntled boyfriend, right? The girl, right. the girl that got shot. Well, I, I got a theory on gun control, and this is like the way to fix gun control. Is this is um, only girls can have guns. 
Like, like you can have every, you can have any type of guns, but only girls are allowed to hold guns. Put some type of fingerprinting where it only takes girls' fingers, prints. Right. It's like, interesting. Only girls, because girls don't do the shootings. They don't. You get rid of, and that'll that'll fix the Me Too um, campaign at the same time. <laughs> this that'll is be, a great that'll solution. be one foul swoop. <laughs> Bang! Yeah. We fixed all the problems. Well, even I was thinking like with the when the um, yesterday when everything happened with the Austin bomber, and okay, now we know the identity. I'm like. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, like it's a young white male. That's pretty. Oh, that's I, pretty I I hate when it's uh, I hate when it's a fucking uh, like like the, like a bomb goes off or something. Because me being the anti-gun comedian from mm. that routine, now I've just been receiving letters all day that go like this. Maybe we should ban bombs. You yeah, know right, I mean? yeah. I'm like, yes, that sounds we, good too. We, we 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 actually have we actually have got b- bomb control in action. You know? yeah. and that's why you can't go to a shop and buy. A a fucking bomb, right? <laughs> if someone goes home and builds a gun in their garage, hey, I'm gonna more kudos to them. Well yeah. done. I'm going to let them shoot a... If you're a person who manufactured your own gun in your garage, yeah. I'll take my hat off to you. Well done, shooter. There was that movie um, with Clint Eastwood where John Malkovich made his own plastic gun. Yeah, he made a plastic gun. gun. It was yeah. in, in the in line, line of fire. fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. of course, Doug is going to know. <laughs> Doug, where's that rank for you? One of your more favorite movies or less favorite? Uh, <laughs> it's probably on the more yeah. favorite side. Malkovich yeah. is a good bad guy. I like him. It's a good, it's a good I like, movie. It's, I want him to get away. I liked him so much in that movie. Well, it's yeah. all. It's also the idea of like the president's in trouble. Bring in the eighty-year-old <laughs> Secret right. Service guy to, <laughs> to jog next to the Escalade. Right? Yeah. You know, it's like the it's same a, guy I, that was there with Le, with uh, Kennedy. Well, that's the thing. That's yeah. the thing with, with like Kennedy and all sorts of stuff. I, okay, so, so uh, Lee Harvey Oswald is arguably wrong for doing that. Actually, not even arguably. He, <laughs> he, was, he was. He was. He was. What did I say? Bad, argue, bad, 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 bad Yeah. Yeah. Bad. He was. He was in the wrong. But <laughs> but when did we get to? Because now, like the the president has bulletproof glass. They have his own blood in the door frame, refrigerated, ready oh, to go. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Like like the doors are really thick, and, and they're, yeah. they're, they've got a pint of his own blood sitting in the door frame, ready to go. An Whoa. oxygen tank and a this and a that. The cars are kitted out for assassinations, right? Where, but. Was there ever a time in society when we were like, let's just put him in a convertible, yeah. just hanging out? <laughs> and also, when do... Well, the world was so underpopulated back then. When in the centre of the city, in prime real estate, go, we'll use this building in prime real estate to store books. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bit that blows yeah. my mind. This is our book storing yeah. building. <laughs> that would be offices of, right. of right. you know, fucking <laughs> Dallas, want- Texas, guns and guns and guns law firm or whatever. Yeah. And, and no, we're a book depository. Yeah, that is very strange, and I never once thought of that. That should and be right there. That should be in a warehouse <laughs> way on the outskirts of town. Yeah. That should not be holding up a prime thing. That's the biggest conspiracy I have. Where were you keeping your books, Dallas? Why did they have to be in the middle of town? <laughs> what book did uh, he say he was there to check out? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, was it, wasn't it just like where they kept all the college books? Yes, like yeah. they kept all the textbooks when you hand right. them in at the end. You hand it's them in at the end of the year, and right. then they go, "All right, and here's fucking, yeah. here's why leeching is good for the right. medical students." Like it was back in the day, right? Yeah. And and so that it was a it was a book storage high rise. Yeah, what? Well, that's not a good system. No, you're right. You have to bring books down. I assume there's a lift. You, you need somewhere with just the books in on pallets and a yeah. forklift and one floor. That's the best way to transport books. But there's no, yeah. there's never been a book storage high rise in the history of time, and no one questions it. I think we're ready for July. I think this is going to, this is going to fly in July. Now, uh, but no, no, it is, no. but it is true. The, the amount of money. That change, you, you gotta have a new act. Oh, no, 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 this isn't, this is, oh, this is my new material. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have never said that this could yeah. be some good stuff. No, no, this could be really good. Future really classic good. book depository. Don't, don't, don't think I'm rehearsing this. <laughs> no. And if this does come up on my stand up in the future, please don't think yeah. that I've been trying to work a bit on the book depository. <laughs> it does work, though. We were yeah, all loving it. It's a really interesting topic. <laughs> it was a <laughs> Jim Jeffries is in studio. The second season of the Jim Jeffries Show premieres next Tuesday, March 27th at 10 30 p.m. on Comedy Central. It's a great show, so. And Doug Benson's in studio. The next Doug Loves Movies is happening March 27th at UCB Franklin in Los Angeles. Go to Doug Loves Movies. If he doesn't Doug. cancel it again. Can, can, I, can I ask you, yeah. uh, whilst people, can I do Doug that, that Loves Movies? 
Yeah, sure. You never asked me. You got me to do the one where you got high, and I don't smoke weed, and that was one of the worst days of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't smoke it was weed. great for a show, though. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you never did Doug Loves Movies, but you, I, I've you done got high the, I, I, uh, Getting... Doug with high. Yeah. That was the one. I've still got the mug. I still drink out of that mug in my house. Well, that's that's great to remind yeah. you of that awful day. <laughs> yeah, well, no, no, it wasn't your fault. It was the weed's fault. But I had to go home. And I remember I, I, I had to take care of my kid that day, and I, I just don't do good on weed. Yeah. If, if you ever bring out the version of Get Coke with Doug or something, <laughs> I'm very, I'm very, <laughs> I'm very functional on that yeah. one. <laughs> You did, your kid didn't enjoy a lot of extra nap time? <laughs> well, I couldn't because my kid was home. My kid yeah. was home and I had to That's like... That's what I mean. Just say, let's both nap. Yeah, yeah. He but does, you never have a, a weird experience on weed? You never, you know, get a little... Every once in a while you go, yeah. oh, this is all too much, you know. But that's yeah. usually when you pour something else on it, like uh, alcohol or mushrooms or something, you know. Mm. Uh, weed by itself, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with it. But that's the great thing about it is he knows it's not for him and he doesn't do it except when he gets coerced onto an internet talk show. I'm all, mm. I'm all for people taking. I'm all for the legalization of it. It's just, yeah. it's just not for me. Yeah, yeah. that's I, fair. I, 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 I can't talk on it, and I, I feel like talking is like one of my skills. Right, and it's like you're taking away my skill. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, like in a party without talking, I'm yeah. nothing. I'm not like a good-looking, interesting person who can play cornhole better than everybody right. else. That's usually when I know that it's going <laughs> bad. Is when I'm in a room with people. And everyone's talking, and then I have this moment where I'm like, I haven't said anything in a really long <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I was like, right. fuck. Yeah. And, and, and I wouldn't and, know what to do. Like, <laughs> and you've been asked questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're just like, mm. yeah. <laughs> One thing yeah, you- I agree to a lot of things I didn't mean to. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> just you, like, not knowing what they're saying, just going, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's the thing about weed. You don't want to have one internal thought like that. You know, no. everything, you just want to keep pushing it out. Because as soon as you go like, hey, is this weird? It suddenly becomes weird. Yeah, I spiral into yeah. it. Or I remember something sad from my life. And then yeah. I go, Whoa, and so, yeah. yeah, I'm no good. Alcohol never makes me remember sad things. No, alcohol, you're helps you forget. comfortable with. Yeah, it helps me forget things, yeah. Yeah. And Coke just makes me more interested and, in other no, people. And, and Coke just makes me remember that sad thing, I was in the right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a really good point. <laughs> it's good that I hit that woman crossing the road. My car was meant to be there. I honestly think that you could probably tie into a lot of the Me Too movement with Coke. You know what I mean? Like, there's plenty of times where you're like, oh, I thought you wanted to do that. Because we were all high. Yeah, I, I, we were I, have, this... I have no comment. On <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No one does until it happens. <laughs> yeah, cocaine isn't an aggressive drug at all. It makes everybody chill. <laughs> you don't do any other drugs besides marijuana. Though, That's right? it. Yeah, I'm exclusive of that. Or, you know, I, one could argue alcohol, but I don't do uh, caffeine even. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I don't know what you guys are drinking, but I just have water. We're just doing water. Today. Drinking yeah, okay. Red Bull. Yeah, yeah that's there you go. Not too that's got to be the worst thing a person can do. Really? Right now, of all the consumables, <laughs> it's sugar free. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sugar-free. That's, that's fine, yeah. then. It's yeah. sugar-free. Sugar's a drug, right? Uh, Chris, you were into Red Bull, and you said it got you incontinent. Oh, yeah, it was he really said he would be. Oh, it didn't give you wings? He said, he, oh, would, no. uh, he said that he would slightly be paying himself all day. And he said just a couple drops. Yeah, a little would just, little would just come out, yeah. Because yeah. I was pounding a lot of Red Bull. I was pounding the tall boys of Red Bull every day. Yeah. Right. Fuck, I love because I love the taste of it and I like the way it made me felt. But it was just, lo- the way it made me I, felt. The way it made me felt. <laughs> and you see, this you is, use them, this is the thing. I don't know a lot about women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like that, but the amount of incontinence underwear. I watch a lot right. of TV land. <laughs> I, 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 chill, yes. I chill out the episodes of Mash. Right yeah. to this day, I find it comforting. It's it's to have on the background. So I watch a lot of TV land. So I watch a lot of advert about life alert necklaces and stuff like mm-hmm. that you know I, and so when i'm doing a binge of the golden girls um there's a lot of uh, adverts for women with incontinence and these underwear that that uh, even when i piss yeah. myself these look frilly right <laughs> It, it, are they all pissing themselves in older age, or is this a rare thing? Because I, I would be led I to feel believe, like it's coming for me. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm one size away from like being myself. I feel like 80% percent of them are pissing themselves. <laughs> and then, but they always say in the adverts, now I can laugh again. Right. And it's like, is laughing... Like, I would just... <laughs> Just give up on laughter. Just yeah. if, if laughing made me piss myself, I'd go, not worth it. 
Not yeah. worth it. Don't tell me a joke. I'm having a clean day. I don't want to hear it, right? It's, it's the thing, for sure. I like, there's women, and on my mom's side of the family, as they get older, they just accept, like, if you make them laugh, they'll pee. My, and they're, they're not even embarrassed at yeah, this point. Yeah, they're yeah, like, they, well, yeah. And, and yeah. is it, and is it like, I, is it like I laugh, at like, like a teaspoon of piss comes yeah, out? Yeah, just a little or bit. Or is it I yeah. laugh, I piss myself no. completely? <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I just, think you're talking about just like a little comes out. Yeah. But enough to really make it difficult. Enough to like like a like a a quarter size mark, right? The size of a quarter, yeah, right. Um, And okay, so here's my question: What age does that happen to you people? And I I mean you people in the nicest way. I think once they start having those babies, the babies fuck up everything. And if you don't have the babies, does that all stay good? Yeah, I think it does. You don't piss yourself. But I think it does eventually wear out. It just maybe doesn't wear out as fast. But yeah, it seems like no matter what's going on. By a certain age. I mean, I so if you go to a it. comedy club, do you just like take four pisses and then just like yeah. I've taken it. I've taken diuretics, well, I'm dehydrated, I want to have a good time. This is why like older commit like Bob Newhart won't tour anymore because his audience has peed too much over the years <laughs> and it's not worth it to them and he stops being a draw. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you've got to have a younger audience. Now we've all pissed ourselves out of laziness. Or we've just all just men. said, oh, I'm not. Going all the way in there. I mean, you know that from Wait, a pool. Yeah, all oh, of us. I, I, yeah. I do. Pool. I do that thing where I'm in bed when I need to piss. I think Homer Simpson did that once. Like, there's got to be a better way. Or I just got, try to convince myself to go to sleep. But eventually, you have to get up. Right. That's what's the annoying thing is like you wake up in the morning, you're still tired. You got to hop up for the piss, and you're like, "Can I put this off? Can yeah, I yeah. just can wait I an hour? Can I sweat it out? Half. Yeah." Can I sweat it out? <laughs> it's 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 like I did. I yeah. one I I bought a uh, authentic. It cost me like three grand. Like but like top to bottom for Halloween one year, I bought an authentic stormtrooper outfit, the real one they used <laughs> in the movies, and I felt like this shit. Now I found out that I have little stumpy legs, so I walked more like C three PO than a stormtrooper because I couldn't bend my legs. Probably I couldn't sit down the entire party, but I looked money right. But. It was. Uh, it's a full black bodysuit, and it's all the armor strapped on it. It's in like sixty different pieces to put this thing on properly, and uh, you can't piss in that. That's no. a, that's not happening. That's not happening. You have to go home. I can only be at the party for an hour before I had to urinate. Yeah, <laughs> then, that would. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do it because well, I already think like exit strategy. I base that on P at all. Times. So from now on, so the next year I wore like an Oscar the Grouch outfit, which was like the bottom half of the suit is just the bin. So it's like wearing a big skirt and yes. you're just wearing right. like a, and that one you can piss anywhere. You yeah. can, you you can, can squat pee. in the garden talking to someone and piss. That's, yeah. a, that's a great urination Halloween outfit is the Oscar the Grouch. If <laughs> anyone's all. out of out all. Of all. I loved him when I was a kid, the way he lived in that bin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just lived in a we bin. We say garbage can. Yeah, yeah, a garbage can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the because it's a bin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in the rubbish, <laughs> in the rubbish bucket. Um, yeah, yeah. He, everyone always like, why is he grumpy? Well, he lives in a bin. Yeah, it's not. It's not an easy way. <laughs> he's, got, he's got every reason to be grumpy. He yeah. should be called. It awesome. Sounds good when you yeah. say it that been. way. Yeah, yeah. 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 the word garbage. Yeah, is the bad part. You would have taken the bin out. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. But not yeah. so much the trash can. But you know, when you get into that piss thing, and I forget who brought it up on the show one day, is like when you see Hitler talk and all those Nazis, no one went off to take a piss. Yeah, they that's... stood at attention for as long as Hitler. What do you, what, what do you, what you what raise you... your hand to go to the bathroom? Yeah. They just think you're saluting. What are you saluting. talking about? Yeah. Like, you, I've never seen more footage, continual footage of Hitler for more than five minutes. <laughs> No, I've, but never would, watched, I've never watched a, here's three hours of Hitler at the Apollo. So do you uh, think It's that, always like a documentary where you get a minute here, a minute there. How much continuous footage of Hitler? But every seen? scene is always full, is what yeah. Ron is saying. Yeah. You but think they, they catch a moment where somebody, somebody was Somebody was just walking out like, I'll just be right <laughs> back. Sorry, Could you imagine me. if Hitler just stopped talking and looked over? Who's that guy? Yeah, where where are you going? going? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, that must have been scary. <laughs> I wonder if Hitler had a lot of heckling at those speeches. He probably did. He, maybe the early days you know what i mean like yeah. like his first year uh, the, of doing it the jews were all right yeah <laughs> <laughs> some of them i don't like <laughs> or did it was did he also say stuff and you know i don't like the aryans yeah. that much yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know that's not working brown hair's yeah. way better <laughs> what are you talking about i don't know the volkswagen's we, good i'll give you that it's like if we like we never saw him building up to that point. But do you think he had early days where he was just an 
pretty good, you know, public Well, they speaker. reckon he was always a great... But whenever you go drink in beer halls around uh, Germany yeah. and you're on some tour guy... Now, I've been a few times to Germany to do gigs and stuff, and I've been to Oktoberfest, and I thought, they're always like... They, they're always selling you, that okay, we're going to take you to this beer hall, and they go... Hitler used to speak here. <laughs> and I always tell you, like, yeah. Eh? Ah, nice. Eh? Yeah. But that's what, I always have a problem with comedy clubs that brag about um, famous comics who used to perform at their club. Mm -hmm. Like, almost, they always try to sell it like almost like they made them or something like that. Right. But they, they, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll say something like Rodney Dangerfield used mm -hmm. to play in this very club. And you're like, yeah, he. he he wasn't born famous. <laughs> yeah, right. Do, tell me if this was where he had his last gig, and then you've got me. <laughs> then, yeah. then, then you've got me. But if it, one of his first gigs, yeah, of course. Right. He opened Michael like the fucking rest of us. Had, right. to, had to go do it. And obviously he did every one-nighter in Iowa for a while. You know what I mean? Like, you certainly he, can't. He also sold a shitload of aluminum siding. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, what I heard right up yeah. until he was 40. He was aluminum yeah. siding. I don't even know what aluminum siding is. It's, it's, it's aluminum siding, first yeah. of all. But, yeah. but but it's on most of the East Coast now. But what yeah. is it? It's just you put a bit of foil on the side you, of your house? You put it's it like, on there and it, it, it helps you with the heating for the house, suddenly the heating. And also, is, isn't it easier for clean? Like, you can pressure wash it. No one It doesn't does age. It's just. I've it's never saw like anybody pressure washing their house. <laughs> They're just like, it doesn't age as fast. You get another yeah. 12, 14 years. Yeah, if I had it. to pressure wash a house, it's just going to be a dirty house. <laughs> yeah. No, no, one's, no one's making it. I just go, I live in a dirty house because my pressure wash is no good. <laughs> and I'm also lazy. Now, do you know what your first couple of shows are going to be back as, as you come back, Jim, or you haven't? Uh, um, we right we have a couple of topics that we know we're going to talk about. Yeah. Um, we have a couple. I know what some of the field pieces are going to be. Yeah. We have a field piece coming up that I just, I just watched. Uh, and I, I, I don't want to blah, blah, about uh, abortion in Ireland, and that's always good laughs. Sure. You know what I mean? we, we did a whole thing about how they're trying to. Uh, they're, well, it's banned. Abortion's banned in Ireland. But so now the uh, euphemism for getting an abortion is. I have to take a trip to London. Right. Because 14 girls every day from Ireland go to London, get their abortion, stay in a hotel, and then they come back oh, to those Ireland. Those poor 14 girls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> over and over. Yeah. Was that the same That's one? The same, oh, the same I see. Same I one, see. Doug. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, the abortion 14. <laughs> what they have will a they learn? Condom, honey. Just have your own. Yeah. <laughs> so that comes up. What else are you going to be? Um, we, did a, we did a field piece in Israel about circumcision, yeah. which is fun because they're all. <laughs> All for it, and there's a lot of them, and then but they've got a small fraction of people who are angry about the ends of their dicks being cut off. So we chatted to some of those folks. Yeah, uh, we went also over in Israel. We did like the classic: uh, uh, a Muslim, a Jew, and a Christian walk into a bar, and we we, we tried to sort out religion <laughs> and had a chat to all those people, like. And, uh, and talked about uh, Israel Palestine and how that's turning out. Turns out they're not happy. Not happy. Still, they're still problems. Yeah. Still, still problems. They're not. Came they're not together. They're not getting that fixed at all. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna go. I'm uh, this Saturday. I'm actually. I'm going down to the gun rallies with all the kids. I'll tell you what's happening about that. Right. So I, I had a routine that 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 got millions and millions of hits of me doing a thing on gun control. And so they do these big gun rallies, and I thought, what I'll do is, for the field piece, I'll go up and I'll do that routine, and it's going to be slightly funny because the outfit I'm wearing, I, I don't fit into anymore. I've gotten fatter <laughs> since I recorded it. I was going to put on the same outfit and try to do the same thing and realize that the kids don't even know the routine and just go, you're welcome, I'll do it. You know what I mean? That was the <laughs> and so we tried to organize that. And with these gun rallies, because the kids are all – adults aren't allowed to talk. It's just teenagers. Oh. Right? So I'm too old to talk at the gun rally. I'm not allowed to. Uh, so we're yeah. just going to do a man in the street thing down there and see see how it goes. It might not be good and we might not air it, but if it goes well, we'll air it, you know? Yeah, those kids have, have popped fast too, right? Yes. Like they're already like established. What if they take over our entire government? The kids? Yeah. Eventually. We should probably yeah. say that we support them. Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> well, I, I believe that they're our future. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's why we needed this time to be ours, Jim. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they're the future. Let us have the present. Yeah, I want to have a protest where old people just come out and we go, yeah. no kids can talk. And it's, the, it's, the, it's called the back in my day march. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no hashtag. Yeah, nobody moves. So yeah. Stay in one spot. Yeah. And you're not allowed to put it on your Twitter or your Donkey Kong machines or your whiz bang, whatever. We're just going to get together the old fashioned way by walking around from house to house with a petition. <laughs> 
Thanks so much for stopping by. We done? Yeah, you're it? done. Yeah, oh, yeah we'll you're on a on schedule. I'm gonna hang out. Yeah, <laughs> you. Yeah, he has a career right now. Yeah, you're my, everything's for been canceled snow. for me. <laughs> for snow, he canceled last night. Yeah. Chris, the plug. Uh, the second season of the Jim Jeffrey Show premieres next Tuesday, March 27th at 10:30 p.m. on Comedy Central. Jim has a new special coming out on Netflix in June, and go to jimjeffries.com for all his dates. So funny. Uh, see you next time, buddy. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks, Ron. Oh, Bennington Show. Doug Benson is in with us. Uh, DougLovesMovies.com for tickets to all of Doug's dates. Happening March 27th at the UCB Franklin in Los Angeles. And we were just talking about Jim Jeffries and what he taught us there. We did not know that the president travels with his own blood. I know. Which makes total sense. It does. But I know, like, let's suppose that the president is going to Los Angeles. You know how they shut all the mm-hmm. routes down. They know every, they have surgeons waiting at every hospital on that route. So if he's going 10 miles, there might be surgeons at four different hospitals waiting to make that happen. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's weird, but it's so it's such a dark way to live. Yeah, to like th- to keep that in your mind. Look, I remember one time years ago, and it was during the first President Bush, and I was doing radio, and I had a gig introducing him. Right, we were going to introduce him, and we had to get there way early, and it was an outside thing, so they had snipers in the trees, they had boats in the water, and I, and the Secret Service guys were there. And they were great. We talked all day. They were very curious about radio and comedy. And then the second that the thing started coming, they turned around and stared at me like they wanted to kill me. <laughs> and I was just like... We were friends. And I tried to bring up something, and a dude didn't even... Add, and I'm talking about a guy that I've been fucking around with for two or three hours. That's so weird. Everything around the president, the sitting president, becomes tense. Uh, Doug... Now that we got Jim Jeffries out of the way, you said you wanted to play some Doug Loves movies. Yeah, I'd love to. That were ruined because of the snow. I prepared some games for last night, yeah. and I, I don't want them to go unused. I could roll them over to the next episode, but they're very specifically uh, targeted at the group of gentlemen that were going to be on stage last night at okay. the Gramercy. All stars of Sirius XM. I still want to do that show one day. I still think that would be a fun show. That would have been a blast. Yeah. It would have been uh, it's a great group of fellas. All right, what do you want to play? Maybe we can get Gail and Nikki in there, though, now that we, now that we have to reschedule. I would yeah. love to get Gail and Nikki. Yeah, I mean, Somebody said you awesome. two were out together last night, and then someone else said that it's a secret rela- uh, lesbian relationship. Oh, no. Yeah, You know, I don't want to comment on okay, it. Okay, smart. <laughs> smart, that's your private life. All right, so... Uh, We'll play one game in, in in its entirety, but then I want to play a small part of another game, if okay. we, time permitting. We'll see how we do. I even have that written down on, on this piece of paper <laughs> <laughs> for, for the show last night. So I, look, I have little notes. To, as you can see, I just have a crazy. Yeah, I've seen your the notes script on is stage, crazy. I'm like, he's not going to be able to follow this. <laughs> <laughs> it's this weird, like, Goonies treasure yeah. map kind of uh, things for, that I want to try to accomplish during the show. And uh, the one game I wanted to play with everybody, it, it's a game we do all the time called ABCD's Nuts. Okay. Yeah, it's a fun name that like doesn't really it. mean anything. Uh, it's, it's, the reason for the ABC part is because it's a spelling game. Oh, no. And, uh, uh, no, oh, no. You just have to know the first letter of the title uh, of uh, in the title of a movie. Okay. okay. So the idea is, uh, I'll give you, a, we'll start with Gail, then we'll go to Ron, and then to Chris. And uh, Gail, I'll give you a letter okay. in the word that we're going to be spelling. And then you just have to name any movie that begins with that letter. And if you succeed, you stay in. Okay. And if you fail, you're out. But if you match the same title that I had written down previously, uh, if we match, then you uh, win the game automatically. Okay. Yeah. Got so it. you could bring this thing, this whole thing could come down at any point. Oh, man. And there's often a theme involved. And the what we're going to be spelling is satellite radio. So the first letter would be S. And then uh, Ron theoretically will get A as long as Gail can think of a movie that begins with the letter S. Okay, so I'm going to start Shawshank Redemption. 
That's a great one. It might be, I think it's The Shawshank Redemption. Oh, uh, I forgot. It begins with a T, but I will accept it because okay. it's the first round. Okay. I will I will keep and that in mind. you don't know my silly rules. I know. Right. I forgot that that is uh, very, <laughs> thus count. We're all about exact titles okay. on Douglas movies. So don't talk to me about the prequels because I don't know what not they're gonna, called. Not play with I don't know what the number goes with what title. I went with a movie called Straight Talk. Oh. oh okay. Dolly and... Uh, James and, Woods and she and she did radio in that. Yeah, yeah. She did radio. All right, Ron, your letter's A. <sighs> All the president's men. Great, great choice. Uh, I went with Airheads. Oh, because they took over. the story of a. Yeah. Now you're getting it. All right. This is yours to take take home right now, Chris. Okay. To the letter T. I'm gonna go with Tombstone. <laughs> no radio and tombstone. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The answer is talk radio. That's, ah, I wrote yeah. down talk radio. Which, by the way, I love that movie. And those phone calls. I think I've gotten all those phone calls over the course of a career yeah. that he had. He has but one he had crazy one night. Yeah. yeah. He had a one nutty shift. <laughs> Uh, I would have, I saw the uh, 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 that on stage, uh, really one time, and it was you know oh, well, pretty you know much like the movie. Too. It was the same. I saw the <laughs> same thing. Yeah, yeah. Bogosian did it on stage first, but uh, I saw it with that um, Cotton. What remember Cotton from those? Uh, Leo Shriver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And he was great. Yeah, he's always great. Yeah. Um, I saw he was my favorite. Uh, I've seen Glenn Gary Gunn Ross like four times now, f- four different casts, and he was my favorite Ricky Roma. You know, oh, of, cor- yeah, of yeah. course, aside from Pacino in the movie. All right, so Did you e- see True West is coming back. Yeah, what is that about? Yeah, that's uh, Paul Dano and um, Ethan Hawke. Yeah, and they're playing it. Really? They're, yeah, they're not switching characters. They're staying the same way. But I'm fucking definitely going. It's to that such play. a good play. So, it's oh my unbelievable. god! And that, in that, uh, and that's the same theater that it was in before. So it's in the round, and they're smashing toasters, uh, you know, inches from people's faces. It's yeah. very exciting. Well, I remember <laughs> who did we see do it when you were a kid? Um, um, we saw Seymour, Philip Seymour Philip Hoffman and John C. Riley. Yeah, yeah, and, and they switched parts. Yes, yeah, they did. So we caught it on the night that Philip Seymour Hoffman was the more aggressive one. And it was right after Magnolia, so I kind of had it in my mind that he was a pussy. And I'm like, oh, we caught the wrong night. And he was so fucking good and so scary that I remember thinking, if he crosses that line and starts to come near my family, I'm knocking him the fuck out. I literally had it in my mind. <laughs> Rather than the performance, I felt like yeah. I'm seeing a guy that could bring harm to my family. Yeah, they. Uh, he's definitely... Uh the better at being the menacing brother. Yeah, he was scary as shit. But still, it was but, yeah. amazing that they could both learn both parts and then just alternate like that. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's really but weird. I'm going to the Ethan Hawke uh, pull down. Oh, I definitely want yeah, to see Yeah, I want to see that for sure. But I, like, uh, as soon as I heard they were doing it, I was like, oh, I can't wait to see who's going to be in this. And I you know, clicked on it. Yeah. And uh, those are both great actors. Yeah. But I didn't get fired up about the idea of seeing them. You know. You don't think Paul Dano was like yeah. almost perfect casting? So he'll be the mousier one? Yeah, he'll be the mousier one. Because it'd be interesting to see him be the mean one. I know, yeah. it would be. And for Ethan Hawke to be messy. <laughs> it might be the... Uh, who knows? I think... They uh, both might be wanting to stretch. I, yeah. think, I think that they're both great, though. I mean... I, I don't know. Paul I just uh, I, 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 mean, I you know I, I, I apologize for that remark and uh, anyone yeah. it hurt. No. And you know I think <laughs> I mean Ethan Hawke is also my my dream boat. Is like, he? I just yeah, loved loves. him so much. Has he rolled through kid. here? He has, and I was very smitten. Right, because he's yeah. he's engaged. He comes in and is alert. Right. <laughs> yes. He doesn't walk through it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a lot of yeah. interests, a lot of things he could talk about. Well, like, we, doesn't um, he like fly planes or shoot guns yeah. or something? Well, we um he was in for the the movie about the jazz uh, musician. Yeah, he's done the yeah uh, that. There uh, you go. Yeah. yeah, so he can talk jazz. Yeah. Well, he's uh, he's done the show like five or six times. He's yeah. fucking great, man. He'd he, be great for Doug Love's movies. Let's oh, try to get are him. You kidding me? Yeah, yeah, that'd be amazing. Love to have him. <laughs> Um, I've been stretching because I'm trying to think of. So it has to be about radio. No, but it no, can but be. Keep it going. Fuck. All right. E. So in the movie Easy Rider, they listen to the I'm radio. Sure they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not even uh, completely sure why this movie qualifies. I mean, I guess there's a lot. A lot of it's at a radio station, but uh, Eight Legged Freaks. 
Yeah, no, oh, no, okay. No. Yeah, right? What are you going to do? L. Ron. I don't I have a radio on with that. I'll just push it over the crest. I'll say lost in translation Shit. to keep the game moving. Yeah, uh, La Bamba. Oh, <laughs> I know. La Bamba. La Bamba. Chris, there's no way you're going to get this. Well, there is one way you could get this. The, the, the next L in satellite. Well, I was going to say Lord of the Rings. I know there's no radio with it, but I don't know. I can't think of another radio. Yeah, L. and it's I mean, the Lord even... of the Rings. But uh, <laughs> remember, <laughs> you could think of another L though. Once you're in Lord of the Rings, you get there's another fantasy movie. It's quite popular that begins with that letter. Uh, how about the movie Langoliers? Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you sure that's not the Langoliers? It's definitely Langoliers. Dude. Okay. Uh, I wrote with Love Letters, which I thought you might remember oh, because yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis is quite naked in it. Yeah. She plays a radio personality. Uh, okay. I am just going to fess up and say that you don't have to worry about it being a radio thing. Okay. okay. It's just a, a movie that begins with I. I. Uh, but I feel like there could be one. I want to. Like, I, <laughs> I want couldn't to... think of one. <laughs> um, okay. In... To the wild. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that is the opposite of the, any scenes on radio. Uh, I went with iRobot. That's just what I go for. <laughs> I go with that for I every time. Because I think there's a good chance we'll match because somebody's just thinking, oh, I, I, robot. T is the next letter. Well, I'll just say talk radio. Um, it's such a good film and I saw the play. <laughs> Uh, let's say T, because my head is a little bit out of the game now. <laughs> um, T, T, radio. You got, you might kick yourself on this one. Once I tell you. T. <laughs> <laughs> Radio. That sounds like the whole game is just na name a letter. It's the way you say it. Then we're not using, you can't use a the, right? If uh, it starts with a the. Right? Yeah, if it starts with the, you can. So you can oh. say their godfather, the whatever. I can't believe that there's not more talk radio things. That's why I'm trying to do to myself here. Right. Um, is there a film called Talk to Me? That is the correct oh, answer. Oh! We have a match. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm freaked out that that even happened. <laughs> I was, I'm, I'm a little sad that we didn't get to R because it's just fun that the answer is radio. 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 <laughs> that that one would somebody would have got that. No, that's what I was, you were looking yeah. ahead. Yeah, I was doing that at A. I was going, does R fall on me? That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah. I was like, because I was thinking, I, I don't know if I was doing it right in my head. And I was like, I'm thinking I'm getting R on this. Oh, you took it early, Ron. Oh, I would have loved to have played that on stage with all those I know. talk radio guys. Yeah, it would have been yeah. uh, it would have been pretty funny, I think. Uh, especially because also, uh, with a lot of comics riffing and stuff, the themes take a little longer to emerge. Yeah. Like, if we had said straight, uh, straight talk and then not discussed it at all. Yeah. Then no, yeah, then yeah, yeah. then it wouldn't necessarily you know take a few movies right. for people to even get a, well, any idea what the theme is. That's when you do those like blurbs, those movie blurbs, and like fucking like I, like three came up before Chris Gethard were, was like, wait, these are my movies. <laughs> I was in, you know, I had a scene or two in these movies, and yeah. he didn't see it coming. And I was in tears. Literally, it was so funny to me. <laughs> oh, I forgot I was in that. And then he would do stuff like, yeah, hey, I, I had, like he was helping, like, hey, I had a day in that. You know what I mean? Like he was helping out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we had fun. Uh, the first time Jim Norton was on, Sp uh, Spider-Man was the answer, right. and then I you know, pointed out to him when he got it wrong that he was, of course, in yeah. Spider-Man. And uh, everybody loves that when that happens. And so last night I was going to do whose tagline is it anyway and you'll understand what i was going for uh after uh, after we do the first one so i'll say a tagline for a movie to gail and just guess any movie you think it might be okay and, and if you don't get it we'll move to ron and then chris mm -hmm. and uh, uh this is the tagline and that's all you get that's the only clue, just, so it's okay. not easy <laughs> the tagline is martin martin just wanted a nice, quiet family vacation. Instead, he got dot, dot, dot. Oh, my God. 
Okay, so... So this is the tagline mm-hmm. that clearly comes before the title. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, he just got... He wanted a, a nice, quiet family wacky vacation. Wacky vacation. Wait, <laughs> hold on. Who's Martin... Not vacation. <laughs> I can't think of what this could be. Yeah, I'm always pointing out I to people that I... the title of the movie is rarely in the tagline. Right. You know, like they, there was never a tagline. Right, oh, I look I up it. in the stars. There's say some it. more. Say it one more time and let me let me just think. <laughs> Martin. I think I got it. I think he's got it. Martin just wanted a nice, quiet family vacation. Instead, he got. Can I do it? Go Captain ahead. Ron. That is correct. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> That's that, a fucking good one. But that would have been out. fun last night with six players <laughs> yeah. because there would have been all sorts of, uh, you know, silly guesses. Right. And then when they all hear Captain Ron, everybody's yeah. like, because you would have figured it out. Well, the, the, the wife was always saying his name over and over. Right. But I didn't know that that was a tagline to that. I had never heard that. Right. No, I was going to say, what about Bob? Because I thought I got. Leo Marvin confused. Oh, right, it'd just be yeah, that yeah. Been pretty it'd good. be a weird sentence to say. Yeah. Instead, he got what about Bob? <laughs> Instead, he got what about Bob? <laughs> uh, now this one, I'll do another one with you guys. This so, yeah. so the idea was I put every single answer is somebody on the panel's first name. Wow, a version of their first name. Yeah, so I was Captain like, Ron. Like yeah, so okay. Ron. Well, that, by the way, is my favorite movie of all time. So Ron is in that title. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is fun. It's fun. I mean, I, I Kurt Russell, when he does a comedy, I, I usually enjoy it. Uh, Kurt Russell is always watchable. Yeah, the he's great in everything, be, but, but he's in too many movies where he just sits around, you know, like yeah. he, he's in the Fast and Furious movies as a guy in a suit that comes in and just gives speeches to everybody <laughs> yeah. about what the plan is. All right, so um, <laughs> I thought I was really clever with this one. Uh Inside everyone is a frontier waiting to be discovered. Inside everyone inner space is a frontier. <laughs> inner space. <laughs> well, we know. All right, say it again. Inside. Yeah. This. this uh, so these are the names of the. Uh, these are the people that were on yeah. the show: yes. Soder, Takar, Bennington. Uh, Okerson, Norton, Roberts. Somebody's name is in this title. And, what's what's the tagline? I'll be amazed again? if you figure it out. I think I got it. What Inside it? everyone is a frontier waiting to be discovered. I am Sam. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is that it? No, the oh, mentally no. handicapped don't have a frontier that needs to be yeah, discovered. I, don't, you know, were, they're like mine. I was sitting here waiting for I am Sam to come elsewhere. up, and you just took it <laughs> just from a, a guess that made no, no sense. No, but here's the greatest part. Here's the greatest <laughs> thing. Yeah. I didn't even pick I am Sam for for Sam's. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went with a totally different Sam movie. <laughs> But do you have a guess, Ron? No, I really Because this one's I'm really silly. One, yeah. Everyone would have been so mad if I yeah. did this last night. Yeah. Because I like when everybody gets <laughs> angry at the answer. Uh-huh. Dances with wolves. Oh, oh man. What the fuck? <laughs> We just had Mike Bichetti in here the other day, and that's his favorite that's, film of all time. It's his favorite. That's when, another guy you got to get on your show. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoy that. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's do one more. <laughs> Here's laughing at you, kid. Anybody could just jump in. Look Here's who's talking it, uh, now, Jay. <laughs> uh, uh, everyone's laughing with you, kid. Uh, here's laughing at you, kid. Here's laughing at you, kid. Here's laughing at you, here's kid. Here's laughing at you, kid. That's good. Oh, Chris. Get guess. into character, yeah, Chris. It helps. Like work it out helps. This title this here's movie. laughing at you, kid. I do a nano impression. It's Christopher Walken when he finds out that uh, his flight's been canceled. Okay. Why? <laughs> <laughs> you know what's great about that is what does it matter why? You're not getting on the plane. <laughs> no matter what we explain to you, it won't feel enough. <laughs> All right. I have a guess why? for here's here's laughing at you, kid. Kid. Play it against Sam. That's it. Oh. <laughs> That's the Sam that I went with. That's really Instead good. of I am Sam. But I, now I'm dying to know what the tagline was for I am Sam. 
Now, <laughs> yeah, he's special. It can't be good. It can't be good. <laughs> I haven't seen Play It Again, Sam, in years, and I remember thinking it was brilliant, but I saw it when I was a kid. I don't know whether it would be too, you know, yeah. on the nose now. Oh, I, if just I, Bogart yeah. walking I think around, you find it deeply upsetting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden, there's a child. We, I was watching Manhattan the other day, right at my house. Were you really Kale's over? Yeah, oh, and bitching man. through the whole movie because the underage girl, like, oh, yeah, you did not see this coming, and I'm like. Yeah, it's a beautiful movie to look at. Yes, I'm, I'm there's done some with child it. molesting in it. I'm done with it. I think I'm. I've You're done with it I already. Think I've re- no, no, I've just retired that movie specifically. And it I, may be I my can favorite. Appreci- <laughs> I know I can appreciate it's really it. Good. it. I can appreciate it, and I loved it in my youth. Yeah, and now it just feels a little painted. And I I'm could, like, I, and also she, the, you could cut that plot out of the movie, and it'd right. be fine. I wish that they it would be he fine. Would have. That'd be they could do that. Yeah. Let's Kevin Spacey this shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's make a super cut. There's no reason <laughs> where he never. Where he, she, he stays in. But, <laughs> the victim is yeah, out. Right, exactly, exactly. But it's not as charming to be like I date a girl who does homework. It's just and not he, as fun anymore. Yeah, yeah it's it was weird. I mean, we, so it was he, right there for he us. He didn't to see. want her to go away to England to do the York. He's like, no, stay with me. Yeah, yeah. And that, like, you're like, you gotta let her live her yeah. life. The dude. only way he could get her to stay with him is if she were a member of his own family. <laughs> then, yeah, it'll work out eventually if, if you just ride it way. out. If you just wait. <laughs> if I could, I don't know, adopt you or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I was having so much. Fun. I was watching the intro of the movie, and I was just like, God, what a great movie! And then as soon as it started, I was like, fuck. It's just not as fun to watch this anymore. That is an interesting uh, yeah. take on that. I haven't, I haven't revisited any of his stuff since you know, since it's really been uh, heating up all, all the talk. Because now I'm yeah. pretty firmly on the now he's guilty side. Now I think also that I think I'm still going to be okay with Annie Hall because it's his friend who's the pedo. Not him, because remember his friend has oh, his a line friend like. Friend is really. Yeah, like doesn't he have a line like I'm here with fourteen year olds? Yeah, no, or something he's like, like twin, so, Oh yeah, Tony twin Roberts is doing that. Fifteen year old girls, yeah, man. It's, yeah. It's something like he's really bragging about. And like yeah. she's, yeah, and it is like fourteen or fifteen, not even like yeah. seventeen I forgot or eighteen. It's like I Hollywood access bus yeah. talk. Yeah, yes, <laughs> it's really bad. Yeah. So I think it's okay because it's someone else, even though that's him. Ro- he, he wrote it. He did have the idea just for someone to say it. <laughs> Chris, is there anyone that you would not watch a movie because you found out something about their personal life? I don't think so. I mean, that I don't. I don't. Well, it's just to clarify, that's not even what I was doing. It was like it's because the the art because, itself. Yes, the art itself was. But you watch mirroring. movie with 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 murders in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like Tarantino I watched, shoots up everybody. Yes, but I've also I've I've watched movies with people who have done bad things before. But it's just that. Uh, something about it feels like he's working out his own fetishism rather mm. than uh, it's hard for me to see and it. The feet, uh, so are, and the feet in a Tarantino movie that are just yeah. close ups of toes. But in my mind, they're consensual toes of age okay. toes. I think once you lick a foot, you don't care how old it is. <laughs> <laughs> Uma really had some really damning stuff to say about him, and he seems to have walked away from it. Yeah. It seems like nobody cares. Brad Pitt and a couple of other famous people are in his next movie mm-hmm. about Charles Manson, which I'm yeah. strangely not interested in now. <laughs> <laughs> in that man <laughs> yeah. taking on that other man. Because <laughs> it might be a little sympathetic or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Manson is going to be as cool as he's ever been. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> Helter Skelter. Dude, I remember being a kid and reading Helter Skelter and kind of digging Manson and digging like, you're like, oh, people can be cult leaders. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you're, you're cool young. enough. You yeah. 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 Gotta, you got to have a little charisma to pull that off. Yeah, you definitely do um yeah that subject has been beat to death though right for a, a, a simple murder it has been rewritten rewatched re-pushed well, like, finally so we'll times. get to see the graphic murder of a you know pregnant woman. pregnant woman just yeah. the, that we as we've always wanted to see it <laughs> yeah deep down yeah because there's <laughs> no way the this, he's in. the last person who's going to shy away from that True. Part right, of it. exactly. It's going to be some serious Game of Thrones shit. Yeah, it is. It's going to be uh, <laughs> as edgy as he could possibly make it. Um, 
Who else? Is there anything else big coming out this year? Chris, uh, Vito, you normally keep up with movies. Anything we definitely want to say? Uh, you got Deadpool coming out. The trailer just came out today. Yeah. You got. The- <laughs> I, I can't get excited about anything the second of anything. <laughs> I want to be surprised at the movie. You hate a squeakle. Yeah. The biggest crossover event in movie history, the Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. And love again, that. that's the same thing. That's, up seen these, that's what Ron seen says things. after every superhero movie. Why couldn't there be 18 of them? Yeah. <laughs> Why was there just three or four? Um, I'm looking forward to it, but uh, I've, I've been really happy with the Marvel Universe lately because I, yeah. I really enjoyed Black Panther. Um, so... I didn't see it because I felt like there wasn't enough white people in it. There's two. People, there there are, are two, sir. Yeah. Two. Yeah. two. Is that bad? And they're both, they're Only both one. great. Yeah. One of them is, is bad and one of them is yeah, good. But they're both yeah. really good actors. Yeah. And they're both not American. Mm. Yes. Australian? So it's, it's yeah, there's no white Americans in this movie. <laughs> we actually had Ben Mendelsohn in yesterday. and You he, had Mendelsohn? He had Mendelsohn. <laughs> he is... He only plays straight evil, and he is the sweetest guy you ever meet. Just walk. I saw him walk in the halls, and I was just like, hey, "He looks so nice." Yeah, he's such, such a friendly guy. You know who he reminded me of? Jim Jeffries. <laughs> he's like a pipe pinball, love hanging out with everyone, love partying. <laughs> They're all like, so I patty. Uh, yeah, they love to the party at all times. Constantly. It's a pretty great party. Yeah, I'm dating this beautiful blonde. <laughs> they do make the entire thing about. Uh, just hanging out to be the most fun that you can imagine. Yeah. There's something about Aussies. They just, you know, they're cooking on a screen door. You know what I mean? They're just... They just love fun. Like, they just want to have fun all the time. Yeah. And travel. Fun and they travel. Are fun. Hey, yeah. did, you see, did you see Bloodline on uh, Netflix? No, I haven't seen he's, it yet. He's, you know, the co-lead in that with uh, Kyle Chandler. I watched yeah. the first season of it. They play yeah. brothers. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not the greatest show in the world, but boy, is he good. Is that the Key West one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I gotta go back and watch it. I watched the first season a couple years ago, didn't finish it. I think they did three, and it was one of those ones where they knew they were done at the end of three. You know, yeah. they knew before they'd made three that that was the last one, so it's got some closure. Because yeah. it's one of those shows where they, it's, you know, it's... The central mystery gets dragged on for way too far. Like, that's probably why you didn't go into season two. Right. Yeah. So you're like, kind of, what else is going to happen here? Yeah. Just the same stuff over and over again. But uh, but the acting's really good. And I agree. Like ben the Mendelsohn's pretty amazing. Yeah. I watched the last season of Love. and you, All of it? Yeah. Did you watch it, Vito? Yeah, I finished it. All right. I don't want to give anything away. But no matter what we do, we still end up with family values at the end of the day. Any movie that is like, hey, people live their life differently, it still ends up with daddy, mommy, baby, everything the same as your your parents were right. Right. You know, with this this thing. And it always interests me that we just can't go. So at the end of this, they decided to have a group marriage, and eight of them are married together. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Or Yeah, he's married to a lesbian, but they're still very close, and they have a nice marriage. But she goes off and bangs people. Doesn't bother them. <laughs> we'll never get. It always ends up. Don't you want a normal life? Yes. And Chris Stanley, I see you going this way with the Costa Rican. Well, I, I feel like you know, we're, right now we're just dating and having a great time. Yeah. But. But maybe you know, end up getting married. But you're not using any kind of contraception. Oh no! But I, I refuse. I haven't used condoms in years. And you don't. I don't even like pull the out. phrase. I refuse. <laughs> like not. I don't prefer to. But if this she is requests, a one man re- decision. Refuse. He always <laughs> said. Kind of gross. Chris told me before you can't rape your girlfriend. She's your girlfriend. Chris, I hope you didn't. Don't. <laughs> that think was that. between me and you, Ron. Well, so then you know it's it wrong. <laughs> so then you know it's wrong. It was we between... had a secret meeting in the voice. So you told Ron he can't rape your girlfriend? What? There's what no happened? rape happening here. Okay. Yeah. But you don't even pull out? Um, depending on the situation, no. But you think that... Oh, so wait, there's somebody wait, at the hold door? On. Hold on. So you're raw dogging it, and you... And you... You like... Because look, I feel like I can't... I can't conceive. Like I, I think my semen doesn't. Yeah, work. but that's not based on any facts. It's just you're I've never just guessing. That's right. just your gut feeling that. And you've been trying. <laughs> no, like, I've, I've been very, actively trying. I've been very irresponsible. Is what I'm saying. But I think it's fine. But to be fair, like you haven't had much sex, so that's I've had, probably. I've, what. I've had plenty. <laughs> but drunk sex. Oh yeah, like drunk sex. Yeah. Sometimes that's the same I, as a condom. So, Do you know that? The drunker you are. Sometimes I even uh, <laughs> achieve a climax so drunk. Whatever. 
That's probably why. That's probably why you haven't gotten anyone pregnant. I've just never had an orgasm. never come to completion. (laughs) So you are rolling the dice. What if she does become pregnant? Well, then that'll be a discussion we have to have. But let's just say the discussion's done. Yeah, let's Let's say it just just happened. She's like, she said she's she's pregnant. Chris, what would you recommend? I would recommend we try to take care of it in the most... Uh, take care of our baby, raise it together, <laughs> no, and give it no, the best life? Is no, that what you mean? I, no, that, that's the opposite <laughs> of that. You know, I just want to point something out to you, Chris. Yes. When we say pro-choice, we don't mean the boyfriend's choice. <laughs> ever. Yeah. I don't think Your it's... job is to support once you've left that thing in. And if she says, I want to go have yeah. a procedure, you're like, great. Yeah. She wants to have the baby, then you're going to go work in the mines and inform... <laughs> A life for those two. <laughs> yeah, but if I was asked what my preference is, I'd say, hey, let's go to the Planned Parenthood. What if she said, okay, my preference my to. preference is to keep this baby. What's your preference? Would you still go forward and say, my preference is to take care of it, as you said? I would- <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take it out back. I'm going to take it for a ride. <laughs> take it out behind the gym, as uh, Joe Biden puts it. <laughs> Well, I don't know, so, uh, we, but you know, in advance, this woman doesn't want to have kids. I mean, I, have you guys I, ever discussed? You it? should talk about that with her. Probably, I should probably do that first. Before. How long have you been together? Eleven months. That is never. Ooh, wow, that doesn't come up. What do you talk about when you're yeah. eating? <laughs> Watching the game. What, what kind of future plans do you talk about? I try to talk about future plans. Just, but is she? Is she a normal human? Unlike yes, yes, you, she's or? a normal human. Yes. So she talks about her future and what she'd like to yeah, do. Yeah, she has a great future. Can I just say that she's a coke dealer from Costa Rica? <laughs> she lives on the edge. Right now, it's between us. Again. Has she ever said I would or I might want kids? Uh, yeah. Stop trying to read the plug and look I, at. I, I want to plug. I want to plug Doug. You're going to plug him at the end. <laughs> Go ahead and tell us. What she has said to you about children. And look into my eyes when I ask you. <laughs> she doesn't want to have kids. Okay. All right. So then that that's all you heart. needed to say. <laughs> that, you just that made, made that up. Start he honestly just made it up. You did. Because yeah, yeah, I said, does she want to have kids? And he's like, I don't know. We haven't discussed that yet. <laughs> she doesn't want to have kids. <laughs> How do you know? No. It's made you up. Yes, have her call with the hotline. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> she straight up told you, I don't want to have kids. Yeah. She doesn't want to have kids. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. Yeah. It's great for us. You got a great system. He's lying. How does she feel about sexually transmitted diseases? <laughs> I play does she want to have those? <laughs> She's not into it. You know what I mean? Like, he if it never, happens, it happens. He even raw dogged his Tinder dates. Take care of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, the Tinder dates I never used. Some really dogs. scandalous ones. Oh, some crazy women, yeah. Chris, why don't you plug what's coming up next before we say goodbye to Doug? Uh, coming up next will be the interview with Adam Devine, Blake Anderson, Andres Holm. Uh, they're promoting Game Over Man, which premieres tomorrow on Netflix. Mm. That's coming up at that's going to be a big one for uh, Netflix. Yes, yeah, this is going to put Netflix on the map. Everybody's going to want Netflix. Finally, now. yes, yeah. everyone's going to want Andres. I like the way he said his Andres. name. Andres. It's Andres or Durs. No, he, he did. He does because we were saying Anders before, and he oh, says really? Andres. I had no yeah. idea. Uh, but they call him Durs, and I, I can't, I can't do it. Yeah, it's like Topher. Yeah. I can call like Topher this. Topher. Yeah. <laughs> I can't call him Fur. <laughs> That's too far gone. <laughs> too fur. <laughs> All right, Chris, stop giving me the signs. Uh, yeah, I, was, I thought he was going to do it. That's why I was Come quiet. Come on already. <laughs> Doug Benson's been in studio. The next, <laughs> Doug Lo- Yay! Yay! <laughs> next Doug Loves Movies is happening March 27th at UCB Franklin in Los Angeles. Go to DougLovesMovies.com for tickets and all of Doug's dates. All right. Uh, coming up next, it's... Um, what's the name of the movie? Game Over, Man. Game Over, Man. We'll be right back. Bennington. Good to see you guys. This is it. The big movie. Holy this is it. smokes. We're doing it. It the is show, happening. The big movie. Oh, yeah. How, how strange is this really to get to this point from where you guys started? <clears throat> it's it's exactly. our, our master plan is working. Yep. <laughs> yes. yep. It's all working out. Just as, That's what my dad says that all the time. He's like, can you believe 
that you're in TV and movies. And I'm like, yeah. That was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the whole game plan yeah. from yeah. day one. Yeah, you don't move to L.A. for no reason. Yeah, yeah. Like you know? this, this is this is what was planned. The but, fact that it's actually happening is pretty crazy. But but could you imagine if you would have said, let's say, eight, ten years ago, here's what all of us buddies are going to do, and you were saying this to people, and this is everybody would have locked you up. It's, it's a, such a long shot to do this as a group. Totally, yeah. No, I mean, when we did the first season of Workaholics, we were uh, filming. Uh, at the house the house we filmed that was where we were living and we because we were like this this show is gonna fail after season one so we might as well get our rent paid you know <laughs> <laughs> like production will pay for that yeah so yeah. we very much did not know we'll save up yeah. maybe get a slightly better place with less rats <laughs> yeah <laughs> fewer rats and now this is a real fewer. big budget movie this is a big two hundred million dollars. <laughs> two hundred million dollars. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. one lying. That, that man thought I was being real. <laughs> Wow. Not yeah. true. They did they not. They overspent for you guys. <laughs> and yeah. that was just for Shaggy. Yeah. <laughs> just Shaggy style. Yeah. Big quote. Big quote. But it really is like a large action movie. Yeah. I mean, if you guys weren't fucking around, this is an action movie. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's how we approach it. I mean, we approached it like action first and then like hopefully uh, we'll be funny as well. well yeah. Well, we wanted, uh, you know, we that like we we keep saying that like Arnold Stallone and Jean-Claude Van Damme raised us. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, right. uh so we we kind of grew up in the, in the, with the 80s and 90s action movies, so we wanted to make something like that. And uh turns out no one would Put us in that movie. No, nope. uh, so it's just we, weird. We had to yeah, make it ourselves. We are. Yeah, <laughs> you know. But all those movies had an element of comedy, just not as much as you guys have brought to this. Yeah, they. Right. Uh, yeah, and sometimes accidental. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes there's some fun accidental comedy in those. What was the um, when you guys were living together? Uh, were you guys watching movies and commenting on them all the time as well, or? Yeah, like that. We had a, a gigantic big screen TV that uh, was one of those old projector big screens <laughs> yeah. from the back that uh, we got on Craigslist for a hundred dollars and uh, hundred thousand yeah. pounds. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we watched, uh, you know, all all the hits, the yeah. Lethal Weapons, the Die Hards. I, um, you know, we smoked a lot of weed, so yeah. Yeah. we had to entertain recall, ourselves. We did yeah. have the one day where we decided to watch The Last Boy Scout, which is Damon Wayans and Bruce Willis. We we watched it for 24 hours. 24 hours yeah. straight. Yeah. I don't know why. We're just like, let's do this. <laughs> it, was it was probably the weed. It was probably the yeah, weed. Yeah, it was probably the weed. So, I didn't live there. <laughs> you, <laughs> you missed all the experiences. Yeah. yeah. He had a girl that loved him. Yeah. Lucky. We made our own yeah. movies. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I'd watch that. <laughs> but, you know, Last Boy Scout is one that didn't hit with the audiences, and yet there seems to be no reason for that, right? I mean, that one seems <sighs> yeah. right in line yeah. with all the other ones. It's pretty good. Uh, I feel like people, it'll have a resurgence. Yeah. If anything, maybe we could remake The yeah, Last that's, Boy Scout. That's our, yeah. that's our sequel. We'll but, just yeah. do that one instead the of Next yeah. Boy Scout. Yeah. Yeah. Next Boy Scout, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Or Son of. Yeah. <laughs> now, you guys had every uh, intention of making a movie you brought it up during the workaholics run but everybody expected it to be a workaholics movie gotcha <laughs> suckers <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, you know, we played those characters for seven years and we kind of were like, we, you know, we want to do something else. If we wanted to keep doing workaholics, like we, we weren't canceled. Comedy Central wanted to keep the, the show going and we were kind of done with, with playing those, those three characters. Yeah. And I remember because, I mean, in writing this movie, it, we started like five, six years ago. And when, when we were first coming up with the idea, I was kind of like, ah, oh, this just feels very similar to workaholics like i don't know i wish we were branching out more or whatever but actually i feel like it's coming out like at the exact right time when people are kind of like hey i miss those workaholic guys so i think it's gonna feel the right amount of yeah there's it's us but it is different it'll be a good segue i mean it's it's still like a three-headed monster that we are and then in the next movie maybe we'll switch it up so it'll be like two dudes against one guy you know we can Kind of switch it up. The uh... we're planning on lots of follow up movies, <laughs> yeah. but I think I think uh, people Got need to. to see see this one first. Yeah. Well, it's uh, it is really funny, and I do agree that anybody who liked Workaholics is going to love this movie. Mm. But also, 
at the same time, I mean, you do bring an element of violence to this. There's some really big stunts in this. And would you have been able to get away with that if you were still playing the... The boys. No, no. <laughs> uh-uh. there's, there's not a world where those guys would uh, would come out alive. That would have been yeah. a weird episode for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, just uh, yeah. Adam nobody... would have joined the bad guys. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Oh, these are cool. What the? Uh, they're what on the right doing? side of history for sure. Yeah, I like uh, their agenda. Yeah, we wanted uh, to have. We wanted it to be th- that you're actually really scared of the bad guys and have uh, the deaths be pretty raw and uh you know gruesome because when uh you know when someone has their face sliced off in a meat slicer in real life pretty disgusting yeah yeah, yeah. Can't try so so we showed that by the way i don't think that's ever been used before right no one's no. ever thought meat slicer yeah we did it yeah we, yeah. Well, we did it yeah, yeah. yeah. You're welcome, world. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess that is one of the things that you have to think of. What you know? What do we put these guys in that no one else has ever had to deal with before? Yeah, and we really just wanted to make sure to ratchet up the stakes because, yeah, we you know we did seven seasons of Workaholics where it's just kind of like you know just dudes being dudes or whatever. So we just wanted to take it to that movie level. What about Kyle? You know, in directing this, this had to be a lot more pressure on him than yeah. probably anybody else right? and we put it on him yeah, yeah. we we're like this is on you bring yeah, it right. yeah yeah <laughs> there, there might be a pitch perfect four <laughs> yeah. that i'm trying to get involved in <laughs> you won't have anything after yeah. this yeah. aka violence yeah um no we uh we've been working with kyle forever and you know what's funny is that in tv you're kind of encouraged not to be very ambitious it's like you get your hired gun you come in you kind of fall in line you shoot the episodes how they do it and then you move on to the next as show yeah. but as a director in movies it's yours you know what i mean so he would always try and like stretch the dollar on our show and put us in these crazier situations than we thought we needed to be doing for uh whatever the episode was so he really got to stretch out on this one yeah but, but also imagine you know just keeping every day up he's not going to have as much fun as anyone else you know those well I, I i've been on those kind of sets where you can see the stress happening all the time yeah yeah he definitely got hemorrhoids from it right yeah, yeah. yeah he wouldn't shut up about his hemorrhoids. Yeah, like, <laughs> just go for it and uh if the movie failed we would have thrown him under the bus so it was, sure, a, it was yeah. a, 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 pretty much a lose-lose for the guy but yeah. he came out smelling like a rose <laughs> So when you're putting something like this together, you all kind of spitball ideas before you write it up, right? Yeah. Who, who's more likely to have the the most far out ideas that? I would say Durs uh, is uh, the most insane. Uh, <laughs> he'll be the one to, to push the envelope, though, probably the the, fur, the, the furthest. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like well because like I'm 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 so we all kind of go like what's the idea? What's the idea? Then I go off and I fill in some of the blanks. And I like to swing for the fences so that mm-hmm. these guys aren't like, hey, man, this is pretty lame. I like to swing for the fences so they go, hey, that's crazy. Perfect. Or yeah. let's dial it back and make it this. But could it be crushing if someone says, I don't know, I don't want my dick out in this movie? <laughs> or <laughs> we don't, we're not that no, kind of friend group. It's not an option. Weirdly, I, I never had that issue. I was yeah. like, dick out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, writing that, I was like, okay, this will be funny. We can shoot it both ways or one way or whatever. Um, and then when we got down to, up to Canada, it was just like, yeah, this dick's out. Yeah, <laughs> the dick's out. I just. Uh, I didn't want to have a prosthetic dick. Yeah. Uh, only because my dick's out in this movie, guys. Okay. Uh, for like, for like quite a bit. Yeah, three or four minutes. Yeah. I fist fight a man. Uh, it got fourth billing. Yeah. Uh, on the poster. Uh, yeah, I, I was like, I, I'm gonna have to talk about this dick a lot, and if I have a prosthetic, it's people right are gonna be like, it's right there. <laughs> people are going to be like, uh, it's in here. There he is. It's in his pants. Uh, like, Why did you get a prosthetic? Is your dick that small that <laughs> you're so embarrassed by it? <laughs> so now, it, w- what sucks is like now I uh, I can't make jokes either way about my penis. <laughs> I can't make like, oh, I've got a big one or I have an incredibly small one. Now everyone's going to know. I have the most normal. Yeah. Yeah. 
They're no. like, oh yeah, no, we know exactly what <laughs> right. you're working it's with. Probably, it's the probably the most regular dick <laughs> Ed you've ever seen. It's probably the biggest bummer that it's not coming out on a big screen because it looks really good in theaters. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, we've screened it a few Over, times. Yeah. And it, uh, it looks its best on a 40-foot <laughs> yeah. screen. Yeah. But I thought that was the funniest thing about this. This is like a big theater movie. Yep. You know? But you're not showing it anywhere before you go well, to Well, we're going to have some premieres, and there, there are uh, a few screenings scheduled around the country. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a Netflix movie, and Netflix, uh, you know, obviously it comes out on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. That's the yeah. whole business model. <laughs> right. Have you guys heard of Netflix? <laughs> but, like, we grew up with theater movies, and obviously when we wrote this and we're going to make it, we are like, okay, so this is going to be a big action theater movie. And then Netflix just came to us with the most open arms and cash and uh, <laughs> budget-wise yeah. um, so we could really do what we wanted to do. And there was a little bit of, like, a, ah, it's going to be on TVs and phones or whatever. But, like, people's home theaters are off the chain now. Yeah, it's very it true. Matter. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. like, that, that's the difference. It's like, our, my TV growing up sucked. <laughs> right. You know? And uh, now, like, everyone has, like, a 60-inch television. Mm-hmm. And if you don't... <laughs> Upgrade your lifestyle. <laughs> uh, no, even phone screens are like legit. But uh, yeah, it's 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 a whole different model. And the outreach, like everyone has Netflix. It's crazy. So it'll be in your in your living room. Zero excuses. Even if you just finish watching a movie, in ten seconds, our yeah. movie's going to start. Yeah, it'll just start <laughs> yeah, playing. It'll be up yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what's kind of scary. Is like there's no excuses. Like my aunts. Like, my aunt, who doesn't even like me, you know who you are, uh, yep. she will have to see this movie, and if she do- if I catch her and she doesn't, I know she truly hates me, right. as much as I kind of think she already does. The movie might make her hate you more. <laughs> yeah. You know, Thanksgiving's going to be weird this year. But you also don't have that stress of what's the opening weekend going to be like. I mean, really, as soon as they greenlit this, you were a hit. As far as being a performer mm-hmm. goes. Yeah, it's kind of nice uh, not having to worry about that. Because it, it could... Uh, you know, I've had movies come out where they they did okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and But maybe not as big as one would have thought. And then people look at that and go like, oh, that wasn't the hit. And it's like, oh, I made $18 million its first weekend. It's, right. It wasn't not a hit. Right. Uh, but... Y- y- so, What's cool about Netflix is you just have to worry about whether people like the movie and whether you're happy with the movie mm-hmm. uh, and not have to. You won't have to worry about what it makes that first weekend. Yeah. Which people you have are no obsessed control. with that now, like opening weekend, like people who like regular people who aren't even in the business care and like read yeah. about it. And it's so weird. It's like, what about longevity? You know what I mean? Like there's a ton of movies like Zoolander didn't kill it out the gate, but then it became like a classic mm-hmm. to me. Well, <laughs> comedy is like, I mean, comedy is not Black Two Panther. Hundreds. You know what I mean? Like, comedy doesn't have this, everybody's waiting, and there's this big swell. I like to think we're the Black Panther uh, (laughs) comedy. Actually, a lot of people are saying that. that. Yeah, Yeah. a lot of people are saying that. (laughs) Yeah. Pick a newspaper up, man. (laughs) But, you know, comedy is, my friends told me to go say it. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like, because I think there's more of a a factor of that. Like, you really want a comedy to be good. Yeah. Where an action movie can be just an action movie and you're like watch it Mm -hmm. yeah well comedy is very specific not everyone is going to laugh at all these jokes but we laugh at it and we we with workaholics we found a lot of people laughed at that so we feel like we got some people out there that'll like it you know uh, i guess when you guys started workaholics there was no real netflix like this right we're only looking at the last couple years and i don't if you think of generations before they didn't have to work with a changing technology YouTube is what first got you guys noticed, right. which didn't really work a couple of years before you started to do these things. Yeah, yeah, we definitely came around at a time when uh, you know everything's changing mm-hmm. and changing quickly, and I, you we had to adapt with what we were doing. Luckily, like we were like the right age to quickly adapt. Like mm-hmm. you know, by the time we got workaholics, it was. We had done years of YouTube and, and making those videos, and we kind of got our legs underneath us 
uh, before we had the TV show. Right. Yeah. If YouTube came out now, I mean, people are talking about like, you should get on Snapchat. I'm like, I would if I could figure it out. Yeah. yeah. We're too old now. It's not happening. Yeah. And yeah. It, it was, uh, I mean, those years of making videos on YouTube were so like important to us growing as like, I guess, filmmakers, you know, just, you just have to know so much about how everything works that it, it really help translate through our that you just career. call us filmmakers that makes me feel <laughs> yeah. all warm inside right? yeah. i yeah. think we are officially yeah. we did we made one yeah. 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 That's now cool. people yeah. have to call us that yeah yeah but immediately it was like we want this thing to be a hit because people in those early days of youtube had no real idea how to go viral you know what I mean? There was... And we did not go viral. We yeah. were not, like, a super no. successful internet group. We got lucky in that way that, uh, like, we just were seen by the right people at Comedy Central. But we are really bad at promoting ourselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of, of that kind of stuff. Well, it, it is the type of thing that, like, the stuff that really went viral on YouTube, and still to this day, for the most part, was, like cats farting you know like yeah. and we've tried yeah. really hard to get we to fart. squeeze these yeah. cats yeah and then we the police came it was yeah. a thing it was a, it was a thing but it, it's, why are you squeezing these cats it's uh yeah it's it's hard to like have a we liked to make like little stories and um on youtube that doesn't it's it's better if they're just quick standalone wacky right. weird things yeah i was also think that was kind of helpful to us our, like our comedic sensibilities we're always very into like yeah having stories with beginning middle and end you know mm -hmm. which is important for a story yeah so when you guys are young did you bond over certain uh filmmakers was there uh like that sense of oh we we all know where we're coming from with this yeah i mean we all love like tarantino and i think like that we like how he uh it was raw and violent and insane, but also all of his movies have comedy, whether you're like Django is a pretty intense movie, but you're still laughing when someone gets shot. The amount of blood that comes out of that person. <laughs> right. yeah. It's, it's comedy way. blood. Yeah. yeah. I also remember us really early on bonding over uh, Foot Fist Way. It was Danny yeah. McBride movie that yeah. was just like, oh, this is the funniest the movie answer. we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. But what's so. cool is like I'm a, I'm three years older than these guys, and I'm the youngest in my family. So I grew up watching like older movies, like Caddyshack era, and like those movies. Whereas those weren't really at the top of your guys' list. No, I'm more of a Austin Powers yeah. baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah baby. <laughs> but so we and like. Like Adam likes Sandler and Farley, and you like Sinbad and more like <laughs> more Carey. niche comedies. Yeah. So we come together with a lot of different comedic sensibilities, but we respect each other's sensibilities, um, and I think that helps create like a, a weird little hodgepodge. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool when Durs would. Uh like initially he's like well you know like on Mr. Belvedere and I'm like I have no idea what you're talking about right, right. I have no clue constantly referencing <laughs> always constantly Mr. referencing Mr. Belvedere harkens back to Mr. Belvedere it's pretty amazing yeah. silver spoons I don't know what you're talking about you a train this. in his house how can you not know <laughs> but it is funny like when you're coming in and think three years is a big difference when you're young you know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's and, a senior and a freshman. And technologically, like, I didn't have a cell phone in high school. Uh, I think I got it my senior year in college, and I didn't have Facebook in uh, college. And then everybody who's their age had all that shit. So mm -hmm. it's like the way you were operating was completely different than I did. That is stunning, man, because yeah. the generation gap used to be, you know, a 25, but people that are... I don't know, let's like say 25, 26 now have a totally different reference point it's crazy. than you guys. And yet, I still think that they like 90s nostalgia, even if they weren't there for it. You know, it's very odd. Well, yeah, and I think a lot of that is because, like, just stuff doesn't die anymore. Like, the Ninja Turtles are still out there. Star Wars is haunting every corner of yeah. the, you yeah. know, it's like... All the stuff that I liked is just yeah, still here. Yeah, there's almost no nostalgia anymore because yeah. it's just still here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it is odd, though, the way like people talk about Star Wars and they'll go like, I'm a nerd. I'm into Star Wars. I'm like, that's the biggest yeah. fucking thing that's ever happened. <laughs> right. yeah. You know? Right. It's like saying you like air yeah. at this yeah. point. What's yeah. cool is if you had any nerdy sensibilities in like the 90s, 
that's the coolest thing. Now. I know Star Wars is right. getting you laid now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's like holy smoke. Now yeah. everyone's like, you like football, <laughs> loser. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> Wedgie. Yeah. We can't. You're stronger than us. <laughs> but you, I think the, the stuff that you do always seems like it has an outsider's edge. Did you guys feel like that? Growing up, did you feel like... Yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> I felt like, especially when we were doing comedy, we were never like in the inner circle of uh, of what was of the cool comedy kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I felt like we were, all, were always kind of just doing our own thing outside of it. And then somehow someone like let us in a, a side door. Yeah, I always thought that was kind of funny too when you like we would meet each other's like friends that we like grew up with back home. Yeah, like we all kind of get along with our friend groups from way back because we yeah. all sort of like came up with the same like you know like the five guys that you just hung out with every day and right. just made stupid videos with. Like we all had very similar stories in that way. Yeah, we when I I met Blake day one of community college in improv class. And after class, we both like just gravitated towards each other. Like, hey, you're, you're funny. Yeah. You too. And it's like, uh, I made uh, inter- like I made videos with my friends in high school four months ago. Do you want to watch wanna, each other's videos? Want to have like a little film festival? Yeah, we had a, we had like a little video off the first the first yeah. day we met mm-hmm. each other. Yeah, but and it, then I just showed you a video of me and my friends drinking. Yeah, <laughs> you're like you've got to see this. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, this is my dude to, dwarf. Yeah, <laughs> watch you went him to fall. real college. That's cool. Yeah, first went to University of Wisconsin. We're like. You're the smartest man alive. Yeah. yeah. You graduated from a university? Whoa. Don't tell them. Human genius. <laughs> now, but those guys that you grow up with, that is, they help your comedy sensibility as much as anybody. Yeah, for um, sure. And it's always odd, right, that you think, okay, one of those guys decides that, yeah, I can make a living doing that, and the other guys will just go to work. Yeah, my, my best friend, uh, Zach is like super funny guy cannot believe that i'm doing this well like doesn't get it he's like but you're not funny right yeah. and i'm like i don't know i disagree yeah. I think people think i am and he's like i'm funnier than you and i'm like well maybe maybe you should have yeah. written something right. you lazy fuck yeah <laughs> I, like i feel like all my friends are funnier than me but like Maybe that made me desperate enough to like <laughs> yeah. pursue it as a career. You're like, I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're just the ones that wrote it down. Right? Yeah, it's just all about like, I guess it's about t- taking the risk and like just leaving your mom's house, you know? Because right. a lot of my funniest homies are still live with their parents. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's a life funny. bit. Yeah, it's a yeah. whole it's life bit. Almost yeah. sad. Yeah. We're yeah. close. We're close. We're getting to the age. Almost. Yeah. No, we're yeah. there. Still yeah. funny. But that is, you know, there's somebody out there who's probably the funniest person who ever lived, mm-hmm. and they have no idea that you could make money doing that, that that's a, a skill set. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I don't know. There is definitely some something to be said for, like, navigating the industry as well. It just sure. takes a bit of, you know, just... Me being a little fake with people or whatever or whining and dining that I know my buddy John real. Paul is not about to right. you yeah. know yeah. yeah he's not changing for anybody it's just was, was Comedy Central the first big pitch that you guys had or did you go and fail at some other places before that we I think Comedy Central was the first one that felt very real yeah. uh, we, we'd done a few others that uh, that were like there's no way in hell they're gonna give us anything and they didn't <laughs> yeah uh, we were right. Yeah, we yeah. knew the business. But uh, Comedy Central, it was like it, it just from it, immediately it just was like we're gonna get a show here. Like we came in the room and everyone's laughing like before we started. Yeah, which is a good sign that they're gonna give you money. Yeah, it's yeah. probably my dumb hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was there. Uh, I like your hair, Blake. You know what? But again, Thanks. it was like the the it was like the internet boom content era of like there's a new website and they're giving this much money to make one minute videos. And we would go in and pitch more of those kind of things, and mm-hmm. it was again a lot of no's. But I do think like our ignorance to the whole industry really helped us in in selling to Comedy Central because we just came in like not realizing like maybe this is the shot you know it's just mm-hmm. kind of like we're being just us in the room and that's kind of what has when we uh we had this our one 
set of videos that went viral where we had an entire album that we came out with where we were gangster rapping wizards from another realm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, straight out of Mordor. Uh, Purple Magic. Yeah. It's on iTunes. Mm-hmm. Spotify. Um, get your listen on. Yeah, get your listen on. And uh, we had made some videos of that, of us dressed as wizards. We had a cartoon uh, wizard rap that we put out. And we were like, this is it. Mm-hmm. Not the relatable workaholics, <laughs> yeah. but th- this wizard. So we went in and Comedy Central, we had done a web series that was basically workaholics. And they were like, uh, we love this idea of you guys living together and working together. And we're like, yeah, totally. But what we're really excited for <laughs> are the wizards. Yeah. And they're like, great. Definitely yeah. don't mention that when you meet with the yeah. president. We're like sliding CDs across the yeah. table to them. Like no, an we, offer. we brought CDs in. Yeah. We're like, we'll, we'll do the rap right now. Do you yeah. want us to rap? We have the costume. Yeah, yeah. 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 we have the a costume. One and a two and a. <laughs> you know, rap. Straight out of Mordor for more wizards come to Mordor. There you go. I'll do it. We got to keep, go. go. keep going. Keep going. <laughs> I don't remember the rest. <laughs> so it definitely in your mind was going to be a lot more broad than what it turned into but the, it seemed like the workaholics would have thought that the wizards was going to be a way out too oh, we put them, so, they're in an episode they, yeah, yeah, we, where our they, characters they, are rapping wizards yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they, made they it. finally made it yeah. yeah so how long were you shooting this before you thought okay this you know workaholics is going to work for a while well, you know, we did the first season, and we none of us uh, left L.A., so you don't really know. Like, it came out in April, and, you know, people are stopping you, and you're like, oh, it's on TV, and, like, so people are noticing. And then we went to Bonnaroo that year in, what, June, and it was, like, pretty, like, people were chasing us, like, Bonnaroo, or, like, we have to give you security. Mm-hmm. Like uh, They thought we had drugs on us. Yeah, yeah. like, we have to pat you down. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, and it was that then that I was like, oh, actually, like enough people are watching this that we might get to make, uh, you know, a few seasons. Yeah, because yeah. even before that, remember we we did like South by before the show even came out, but they had us like coming out and like introducing bands at the festival, and right. we would just get like booed immediately. <laughs> right. Well, the show wasn't out yet. Yeah. I remember remember uh, we were introducing TV on the radio, yes. and. And uh, oh my god! And we were gonna introduce TV on the radio, and then what was the Yo Gabba Gabba? Yo Gabba Gabba. Yeah, yeah, they go, they go real quick. You will not be introducing TV on the radio anymore. You're gonna be introducing Yo Gabba Gabba, <laughs> and then they will be introducing TV yeah. on the radio, yeah. like like, li- like so costume not only, mascots. Yeah, not only did we have to go out there and introduce. Yo Gabba Gabba <laughs> No one knew who we were So they're booing us Before we introduced Yo Gabba Gabba Yeah and then They were Yo, pumped on Yo Gabba yeah, Gabba Yeah Yo Gabba Gabba, 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 Gabba yeah, Got a yeah, quite got an applause. Quite applause On the other side though When we had finished filming um, Season one We had to wait for South Park to come back Because they're like The big lead in For new shows On Comedy Central So we just like Were sitting there waiting And Comedy Central was like You know what Start writing season two which was a huge vote of confidence. Yeah. We were like, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we definitely uh, took advantage of that opportunity and got really good at uh, playing ping pong. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's, yeah. <laughs> yep. We do. It took us extra weeks to write season two because we just uh, really um, spent some time on the ping pong table. <laughs> it's true. But those earliest days of pushing uh, uh, something like Workaholics, that's the toughest promotional work that you've ever had to do. This last week was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you can hear my voice. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I mean, it, it's hard to drum up support when, like, none of us had any sort of r- recognizable name or right. face. I yeah. don't think there was a ton of people that, that saw my Taco Bell ad and was like, we've got to check out this guy's <laughs> yeah, TV show. But to be fair, there were a couple. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, do you, you had that thing early on with Patrice O'Neill on the red carpet, which is kind of... Let's clear this up. Yeah. I feel like this has had a whole life outside of me yeah. that keep, people keep bringing up. <laughs> well, that's because Patrice did at the time, I think. What? Yeah, I remember people were like, "He's talking about you." I'm like, "That's awesome." <laughs> yeah. What are they talking about? And they're like, "How like?" And then somebody sent me the Opie and Anthony clip. So we had been asked to host the Comedy Central roast red carpet, mm-hmm. and there was oh, like yeah. not room on one stage for three people and whoever they were going to interview. So I got relegated to the back, right by myself. So the running bit of the night was. 
they were super excited, and I was like, yep, I'm still way back here with uh, this guy. And mm-hmm. Patrice didn't know that. Right. And was just like, see, this is why it's lazy. And I'm like, all right, well, you're Patrice O'Neill. Go for it. And then he was like, they're talking about like hipster comedians. And I'm like, have you met me? Do you yeah. know me? Take my name out your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so to you, it was nothing at the time. And even to the viewing audience, you felt like it was nothing. But just Patrice kept working this story. I get. I, it blew my mind. I, think, I yeah, was like, he, this is so crazy. Well, I think he was mad that uh, he didn't have a TV show and then three guys that he didn't know right. had a TV show, which I get. He was famous. Yeah. And he didn't have a show. And then three guys he's never heard of before got a show. Uh, you know, and then. Uh, That's the world. Yeah. <laughs> but I, what I like about it is now that he's that he died, he's become this kind of mythical yeah. thing. So it's almost like you had a fight with James Dean. Or, <laughs> yeah, totally. You know, I yeah. Mean, yeah. I, I know. You're, you're yeah. saying this, and yeah. I'm like, are people really talking about this? This yeah. is so crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's absolutely why. I feel like if he was still around, it would have. It would have been. It would have. He just totally didn't know the context and was like, by the way, and he's super, super hilarious. So I was yeah. like, all right, yeah, go, like, lay into me. Yeah, he yeah. would have shit on tons of other people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. didn't care. Yeah. I still don't care. Yeah. He's the man. R.I.P. Um, but those are the kind of things that you go through. At different points of your career, right? I mean, those kind of things can flash up at any moment. Yeah, it's cool. We're, we're just excited that anyone uh, would even mention our names. Yeah. yeah. So, it was tight. Yeah. So if people want to shit on us, uh, well, come, yeah. come at me, bro. By the way, another thing, the other two dudes on the radio show that he was going on, were like going off like they knew me too. It was so weird. I was like, did they watch Workaholics? Like, we are, if anything, they're like these fucking hipster comedians. I'm like, I get more shit for being like a bro comedian from hipsters. So it was just like, it was huh? Just, it was just we so need to early. find a home. Call are we up. bros or are we hipsters? <laughs> Call me up. I don't know. It was just all so early. All the lines are blurred. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was tight. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was just early in the process. Nobody knew that we were like really serious about the comedy game. And, you know, we respected and everybody doing we're it so out there. serious yeah. about this comedy. Yeah, yeah, man. Patrice was my favorite guy on Tough Crowd with yeah. Colin Quinn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I this morning as we're doing this, uh, I was watching the news hammering Jim Carrey over a, a painting that he had done. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, know. I know. That was yeah. Yeah. He like, does so many paintings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anything, we just need to be hammering him on... Uh, <laughs> The new Dumb and Dumber movie, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and not and not his paintings, right? But that's the thing about comedy too. Don't you think it's very tough for anybody to sustain, um, you know, their comedic chops? Uh, no matter who you're looking at, at a certain point, you're like, man, you used a lot of the paint. Well, and also, like, the more successful you get in the industry, the less relatable you get to the, you know, and a lot of comedy just comes from relatability. Like, I don't know if Jim Carrey's lifestyle is anything like mine at all. He's, like, all the way up here and has been for quite some time. So, you know, it's it's hard. And and that's why we've demanded that we don't make as much money as Jim (laughs) Carrey. Right. (laughs) Just be real. They give me $20 million checks, and I'm like, no, I've got to be one with the people. I cannot. (laughs) Please don't pay me that much. Comedy, a lot of comedy is about, like, surprise. And, like, when there's somebody new on the scene, they have moves you've never seen before. And it's like it's like a new boyfriend or girlfriend. You're like, whoa, that sex was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Sooner or later, you know the moves, and you're like, all right, I need okay, something new. Yeah, now yeah. he's spinning around. <laughs> and whoever, now he's spinning around. <laughs> As a kid, no, no. I, make, I make hard rides. Right. <laughs> but so then, like, it's always, it's always pretty unbelievable when you can see somebody I have, have sex with dudes. I have to admit it. I have to come out with it here. <laughs> when you see somebody, like, have a, a second... Um, um, career or whatever like Bill Murray did like a great little pivot where he was like the fun party guy good time dude the guy you want in your corner like when you're having a, a party a good time <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden he became like this curmudgeon and had like mm-hmm. a second chapter and you're like how do he do that mm-hmm. that's so cool he was yeah. the most fun guy now he's like the most uh, over it dude mm-hmm. yeah but it works perfectly yeah I'm, I'm, I bet he just got over it 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just like, hey, I, I know my next move. <laughs> yeah. Are you filming? Uh, but you guys have also been able to break out and do stuff on your own. That When that first started happening, did you guys also think, hey, is this going to stay together as we keep getting offers to do stuff separately? Uh, yeah, I kind of think... I, I don't think we ever thought the band was going to break up. Mm -hmm. We went and did other things. It, if anything, it just gave us more ammo uh, for like fun fun talk shows where they get to make fun of me for being in singing movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and the, uh, I always got to take that shot. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is, is when you go and experience other sets, it's like it it makes you appreciate these guys. You know, like. What I always worried about with Workaholics was like, whoa, this is my dream. Like, it doesn't get better than this. I'm making a show that I feel is really funny with my best friends, and my director is also my best friend. Like, where do I go from here? So mm -hmm. it's kind of like that's my goal, so I'd like to keep uh, living in that world. It's also cool when we first started to go to other sets, you come back and you're like, guys – they do it like this over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can bring that back right. to yeah. the group. The which food's is, better, but yeah. it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it is funny, like, at the time, let's say, when the Beatles broke up, they didn't know that they didn't have to break up. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, now we realize bands don't, you could take two, three, four years off. But back then, they're like, well, I got this other opportunity, so I guess the band's gone. Yeah. You know? We're exactly the Beatles of comedy, and yeah. thank you for bringing that up. Uh, yeah. Ringo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we plan on sticking around for a while to the point where you guys don't want to see us anymore. Right. You know, and we're all old and uh, crusty and doing uh, our Bill Murray impression. Yeah. Well, again, to, to um, go back to, to Kyle and what he brings to this because he's not here today. But what is that that he's able to do with you guys? What is it that he's able to do with the comedy? Kyle, no, what's, I think Kyle's strongest uh, suit is he's able to take what we do and, like, he knows where to push us. If, if we're improving something, he'll come in and go, like, just more, go deeper into that. And, uh, and he knows our, our strengths so well. So he's able to, to really push us um, in a certain direction. And also, he makes things look way better than they should look. Yeah. Like yeah. He's really good at, at uh, stretching whatever dollar you have and, and making it seem like, uh, you know, our, our shit is more expensive than it actually is. Totally, which was huge in us, like, uh, jumping off because, like, w when we made the, the initial, like, pilot presentation, it, it looked awesome, and we had, like, very little money. They were initially like, just make, like, a presentation, 15-minute thing or whatever, and when Kyle saw the amount of money we were getting, he's like, we could, like, make two movies with this. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. like, whoa. Like, Kyle, we cannot <laughs> get back in your cage. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, he rocks. He's also just, like, such an open, warm dude that, like, somebody like me who is... A, like less brave than these two maniacs uh, he makes me feel comfortable to be like okay I can also be a total buffoon yeah right. you know? he's, he's actually a good person which yeah. is cool yeah yeah. I hate him but great <laughs> record yeah <laughs> well he spun on you that one time yeah, yeah he sexually did. remember that yeah he did uh what did I say bring it from the back or something <laughs> he just spun around the back <laughs> <laughs> But but your initial thing is to not be a zany, right? For, you like your own personality. Yeah, I come from a home of shame. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and rules. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like I'm just I'm a little, I'm a little bit more reserved until after midnight. Yes. <laughs> Wild man. Ow. <laughs> Um, so where Don't does this? On where does this go now? Is there? Can you even have a real? plan for what you guys started or you just have to keep riding it out yeah i mean it's always uh it's like riding the wave man <laughs> and on the surfboard know? of comedy um no it, it, we you know we have some ideas for other movies that we would like to do and uh we hope to just keep it going and and kind of we've we've built out this world with our with our friends and we have other friends that we'd like to make movies with and and we hope that this is like the first step in us making a lot of you know movies together it's cool how comedy comes up in like crews where it's mm -hmm. like adam sandler and his crew and will ferrell and his crew and 
and uh, Seth R- Rogan and yeah. his crew, mm-hmm. and uh, and then you know they branch off and. And Bob Hope and his crew. Uh, yeah. It goes there back. It goes, yeah. goes back. Is, yeah. Was he Mr. Belvedere? <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> now, Seth is a producer yep. on this. What does he bring to the game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. He brings that good stuff. Yeah. Bro. He yeah. brings experience. I mean, yeah. Adam was saying this the other day, like, we're TV dogs, mm-hmm. and he's a movie dog. <laughs> Um, so he's just kind of showing us the ropes as far as like from like story stuff in our script to uh, editing. Like he's like, this whole thing can go. And you're like, yeah, I guess that can go um, to like marketing stuff. Yeah, we've never had to like, th- like really market a movie and never had to deal with trailers and uh, test screenings. Test screenings. He lives and dies by tra- test screenings. Yeah. yeah, he like really like encouraged us to do those and like go in and we improved a lot and he's like just go in and and like watch the tapes back and listen to the laughs and see where you're lacking and and uh and also just like trailer ideas and and stuff like that that's just stuff we've never had to deal with before well test screening has got to be it's got to be difficult because i think if you're doing something on stage you're like okay this is the type of audience I'll slow it down or I'll get a little crazier. Mm-hmm. But there, the, the product's already done, and you're watching that screening with them, and you don't know what kind of people they are. You're sitting there in the dark. Mm-hmm. Is this hurt sometimes when something that you said think should land big doesn't? Well, I think that's when it's helpful to have somebody like Seth, you know, who, yeah. like, you respect his taste, and, like, the proof is in the pudding. Like, he's made really great comedy movies so like to have somebody to like him be like this was good and this was bad it was helpful for sure and in with those test screenings like since we do do so much improv it was actually beneficial like if it for a drama or something yeah it'd probably be terrifying where you never went off script and you just did what was on the page exactly if something's not working you're like oh right fuck it's just not working but on you know with a comedy where you do a lot of improv you can go oh that joke didn't work let's put a new joke in yeah we had other yeah. jokes mm-hmm. yeah but even comedically something that could be funny could take everybody out of the movie so you can't even just go by the biggest laughs that yeah. you're getting because you could be derailing the next 10 laughs totally mm-hmm. and back to just to improvising on set so we have like bad guys that are supposed to be evil characters in this movie and like when you're on a set and you see everyone improvising and having fun, like it's contagious and you want to jump in there and have fun. But like certain actors, you're in a role where you can't do that. And we had uh, a guy who played a bad dude who's very, very funny and said very, very thing, funny things. But then we had to go, hey, look, don't. Because right. now you're not a bad guy. And it's like, he has funny things in the movie, but like he can't be funny, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, we really wanted to keep, keep the bad guys uh like actually scary and bad to where you um where the juxtaposition of them being like so horrific and mean it cut to us you know being buffoons it, it would hopefully play yeah well you know going back to seth rogan there is a guy who's had all this success and seems to have kept his regular guyness Mm-hmm. About him, mm-hmm. which is a really difficult thing to do mm-hmm. once you can afford a mansion and a private jet. It's really hard to not just stay in the mansion and snort a bunch of coke. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'm thinking. I think he's yeah. a, he's a, he's constantly working. I mean, this mm-hmm. dude is always working. Like we were working on something with him. Uh, well, I can't remember. Um, was it? Uh, Neighbors, Maybe and he was like, "Hey, you want to hang out in our trailer at lunch?" And we're like, "Cool, yeah, let's do it." And then we went in there, and we just watched him work, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is cool. Yeah, but he was like, "We got to watch a cut of uh, an animatic of this movie, Sausage Party, that they were like working on, and it was just like, oh, even at lunch, like you're grinding." Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. but it was definitely one of those moments where it's like, oh, what you know, what's Seth gonna be like when we meet him? And then he was just. Exactly the coolest dude, you know. It's yeah, like, right. yeah, exactly what you thought you were going to yeah, get. Yeah, it's like, yes, this feels good. But that go like, I think his initial breakthrough was like eighteen years ago. You yeah, know? right. So it is stunning to think. You ever hear like somebody who hits the lottery and then they go to work 
the next day, and you're like, yeah. why? Yeah. You know, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. 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 yeah, we were talking about how... Uh, how he helped us because he's from the generation before us and I'm like he's two years younger than me do you right. know what I mean yeah but he's been he's been doing it I mean I think he was doing stand up when he was like 15 you know and then he did Freaks and Geeks it was like a, he's like a child actor essentially yeah. um, but he just always looked 40 yeah, <laughs> yeah. he did he was like yeah. 19 when he shot uh um, the forty-year-old virgin. Yeah, yeah. he was nineteen years old. Like yes. I still don't look that old, and I'm thirty-four. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and yet he doesn't seem like he ages. Yeah. he got he old there. and then yeah. stayed at yeah. that plateau. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. yeah, that's the secret, right that's, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the secret. Age your children <laughs> yeah. and then keep right. them and that keep way. Them there. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, we were, uh, you know, you were talking about the way. Your friends look at what happened with you guys. How's the families feel about this whole thing? Uh, g- great. I, I mean, we're all going to be together at the premiere on yeah. what, what all Wednesday. the family. That'll yes. be that'll be weird. Yeah. Sit sit next to everyone. Um, during my dick out scene. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm pumped. Yeah. I'm like, there better be a camera on my mom. <laughs> Just do me a favor. Don't make eye contact with my mom. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going to look ever. directly in Cheryl Holmes' eyes. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. just be like this. <laughs> Yeah. That's yeah. my favorite part. That's yeah. what I've been. That's the goal. I'm just gonna be <laughs> hugging your moms from the after party, <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. eyeing you guys down. Yeah. What if my mom like is there. into you yeah, after yeah. that? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> the rap party just gets really <laughs> weird. Uh, Why is my mom <laughs> trying to fuck Adam? <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, you were really good. You were really, yeah. really good. Yeah. I really liked what <laughs> I really saw. Liked my yeah. God. <laughs> I'm Let's glad just say I saw. we were all impressed. <laughs> <laughs> that was some part. My stepdad's just in what? the corner, yeah. like, all right. Do, do, do. Yeah. It, it is uh, oddly sad that male nudity gets a laugh, and you never see that with a woman. I mean, dicks are hilarious. Yeah. They're, They're just so, funny looking. Yeah. They, they look like are. little sock puppets. Yeah. Little weasels. Yeah. Or big sock puppets. Or medium size. We'll, yeah. we'll know. We'll know. Sock puppets. We'll know. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find That's out. That's every review yeah. you'll be reading. Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, congratulations to you guys. It really is, uh, it really is a long shot to do what you're doing. That that you took this thing from improv classes and fooling around with each other, to you know YouTube and then TV, and now, like I said, this is a really major, major film coming out on Netflix. So congratulations, seriously. Yeah, thanks thank so much. You guys. Thank you thanks so, so much thanks. for coming yeah. in. Appreciate it. Friday, March 23rd. Game over, man. There we go. There we go. Thank you so much. Absolutely.